There we are. Here we are. All right, and welcome everyone to Digital Fiasco Live for another Monday night. My name's Dandroid. And I am Jack McBastard. And that was a sigh of what? <laughs> that is well, another Monday night. It is another Monday night. It is another. I know Monday you had night. to run and get your notes, so you're a little winded from that. That's okay. We'll yep. give you a second. I had to <laughs> staple like seven pieces of paper together. <laughs> you make it sound like it's a struggle. Just ah, uh, oh, seven pieces. How dare they? <laughs> I mean, I could have done it in like a three and a four, and then put those together. But you're one rough. of those people that you go to like pull some staples apart. There's literally four pages and there's five staples in it somehow. It's like, what What are people... No. What a waste. <laughs> no, I mean, the, like, if you get those discount staples where they can't get through and they're, like, flattened against paper. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Don't shop at the dollar store. Really? That's all I have to say about that. No joke. You need high-quality staples to go through human flesh. <laughs> Whoa, those are high-end. Yes. All right. I'm going to go get a pen. Okay, you do that. Because I know that you like to scribble a little like kittens on your notes and stuff like that so yes kittens that's exactly <laughs> what i'm known for is kittens and notes all right so how you doing well uh, i'm good how are you doing <laughs> i am doing fantastic i'm uh yeah i'm i'm better now that i i finished spider-man <laughs> yes because so i was because i was trying to avoid uh spoilers for the most part now luckily yep. a lot of the attention was drawn away with with people starting to play red dead uh so i didn't have to worry too much about it obviously there's some spoilers that you can avoid with <laughs> uh with spider-man like that's true i mean uh fucking doc ock like come on that uh, well i mean it's <laughs> the entire like... game was a fucking lead up so <laughs> it's not like that's really a surprise oh no doc ock goes evil what are the yeah. odds it's like oh what a surprise i didn't know that that's what was going to happen even though he's developing this shit the whole time yep uh, we are going to get a little spoilery on Spider-Man, so uh, yes. if you're worried about that, earmuffs, or uh, come back in like 10 minutes, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... You've been warned. Oh, there you go. There's the spoiler warning. <laughs> Scrolling across the screen right now. Oh, welcome, Mame Kill. Yes, there's always... Uh, you always have to watch the ad before you jump on in here. So um, if you just joined us, uh, I'm about to... <laughs> I'm about to talk to, talk about <laughs> Spider-Man for PS4, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to be talking about spoilers because I just finished it yesterday. So if you don't want to hear those, um, Tri hang on. Trigram oh. says that Coca-Cola is bad for you, okay? Uh, yeah. Well, so so is coffee, so is bacon, so is pancakes, so is everything else that I love. So I'll fucking deal with it. Because <laughs> quite frankly, if I don't get any of those things, is that really living? Yeah. You know. You know what? You won't make you live longer but it'll feel longer exactly yeah what the fuck is that That's windows 10 <laughs> okay tell windows to piss right off in the middle of the show <laughs> thanks windows um but anyways yeah so just alert to all of you in the chat i'm gonna talk with spider-man spoilers so uh yeah come back in probably five or ten minutes if you don't want to hear those otherwise yeah. three two one you've been warned <laughs> yeah this is exactly what we'd like to see in our show is people okay. telling people to go away well don't, i mean i'm just watch. i'm being fair okay, okay see main kill is gonna take off for about 10 minutes just to uh yeah yeah that's not okay. worry about it um but anyways i hear spider-man's been bit by a radioactive spider <sighs> you know who else got bit by a radioactive spider yeah well i mean <laughs> it had to happen eventually right yeah i was actually kind of interested because uh I, I didn't know how they were going to pull it off, really, because obviously we get right. uh, we get the introduction to Miles earlier on in the game. Yeah. Um, with the whole you know part with his dad, uh, you know, saving people from a bomb and whatnot. Um, it was just really interesting how they did that because I didn't yep. know if they were going to save that for the next game. Right. Because I think in the real the Spider Verse, like the comic book Spider Verse, he is like an alternate Spider Man, right? Like he's in a different. <laughs> he's in one of the other Spider Verse universes yes. and he yeah. is the spider-man of that universe right in this one are we gonna get like a buddy cop team up like in it, the second it seems game? like it because that right? would be fucking awesome and yes commander santa we are talking about more spider-man that game is awesome yeah. yes and yeah and commander santa actually did play through the first part of the dlc uh i think the, uh, oh, a week ago la, la, so. la, la, la. <laughs> uh, See, yeah don't, no yet. spoilers from the dlc because because <laughs> jack still needs to play it unless the spoiler happens to be that the symbiote suit is in it <laughs> then, he, then he's all for it <laughs> yeah um, but anyways, yeah, so that was really cool that they actually revealed that. Right. Because, um, I mean, I'm fairly certain, and I mean, Kelly or Albel could probably tell me more tomorrow, but yeah. I don't think there are many of the various incarnations of the Spider-Verse where Miles and Peter Parker are, unless I guess now that they had that weird reboot with Doctor Doom, like, being God and crap. Yeah, but I mean, then all bets are off. Cause yeah, because Miles Morales was super popular. I think he survived. Yes, 
I don't know. Uh, they, they would have hell to pay if right. they killed him, honestly. <laughs> but the good news is, of course, Insomniac was pretty much had free reign to do whatever they wanted. Yeah, and, they, so. and that really shows because they did a right. great job with it because they, even though they kept very close to <sighs> the core material because so bad for you. I was recognizing, you know, like scenes and just like the, the, the chaos that was like the Sinister Six and all that kind of stuff. I loved that, like right. the core value of, of the Spider-Man series and everything like that, but... They they kind of did their own thing with with certain parts of it. So you had like um, you had the uh, sable cops or whatever the fuck they were called the Silver sable sables, crew. Yeah, yeah, and that was kind of cool. They have like the city on lockdown, and you have like the gang wars in the streets and everything. Could so. have used more Mysterio. Um, yeah, I think that they're gonna save him for a major player in the in the I, second man, game. I hope so. Or one they, of the DLCs. Had, maybe honestly, they had to hold something back yeah. because the second game. You could technically do the Sinister Six again. No, the but second game is going to be Venom. Yeah, it's going to be it's, it's going to be, be Venom with a yeah. s- secondary character as Mysterio. I would I would think not somewhere so in there. secondary. It's okay. going to be uh, what's his face as uh, son. Yeah. Um, so here we go. So here we're getting into yes. the most major spoiler of the whole thing is, and this is where I got a little confused, but also kind of excited hmm. that all of a sudden uh, Harry Osborn right. is not. The Green Goblin, or is not or going to be Hobgoblin. the Green. Or sorry, no, Hobgoblin, Green Goblin. Or Harry I, Osborn was the kid, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So he became the Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin, sorry. And it was Norman Osborn that was Green Goblin. Um, but either way, we're right at the edge of my Spider-Man. Ins- Insomniac, comic Insomniac has taken a complete like right. left turn on that, and yeah, all of a sudden he's got Harry Osborn, his son, right, locked up in this like like case to like save his life because he i guess got infected by a symbiote right we don't even know if this is the like venom symbiote because it's kind of green but it's because the tank that he's in is all green water and stuff like that but it was just a really interesting take on it because i figured (laughs) uh uh i i figured at that point, like I, when you sneak into that back room and you see that big case, right. you don't see what's in it. No. But all, all of a sudden, I was just like, okay, I'm in Osborne's place. You know, Harry, they keep talking about Harry, but he's not anywhere to be found. He's on vacation. So right. I see this big case with like a heart rate monitor on it. So I'm like, okay, he's in that fucking oh, thing. No, so no. <laughs> he, he's fine. He just went to a farm upstate. Uh, right, right. Yes, yeah. that's what it is. Plays with all um, the other rich playboy <laughs> But anyways, teenagers. it was cool to actually see it open up at the end. And all yeah. of a sudden, the you know, he's has his hand against the glass and all of a sudden the symbiote jumps and like kind of smacks into the glass i'm like wait what is is this it's got a completely different take on the story well apparently in some of the later reincarnations of like when they reboot the series and they restart it over and over again it's like some of the ultimate series some of the other series uh eddie brock wasn't always venom there was like right uh, right we've had multiple different yeah, iterations like of venom J. jonah jameson's son it's just one it's just that typically right. the osbournes they are the the goblins basically right right but apparently at in one of them yeah. uh, uh harry osborne is venom see and that would be really cool to see if they even made a new symbiote that mm. was like green and orange so it looks like a hobgoblin but uh, it's like a like a symbiote version of it that is, would be so cheesy big, like, nasty teeth and no. everything like no stay the fuck away from my cannon oh oh stop it they, they're writing their own cannon at this point but, you know within certain boundaries right i mean they're rebooting but they always lean back towards the mean yeah as long as mysterio has a big fishbowl i'll be happy and i mean honestly it could be one of the type of things where he starts with a symbiote right but then the symbiote leaves and then latches on to Spider-Man or Eddie Brock or, or someone else. As long as I get my suit. Flash, you know, someone. Oh, Jesus. Um, we don't need Flash in the game. No, nobody likes Flash. <laughs> <laughs> but if he it, that symbiote leaves him and then all of a sudden that leaves him insane, wanting more and more power and stuff like right. that, and all of a sudden becomes the Hoggoblin at that point or, or something like that. I see, could easily see them writing something like Tron that. Tron has the, the, the real part of it. He says, while playing, it would stay away from story missions until Jameson's randings were over on his podcast. It, they're great. So they're good. honestly yeah. so good. I That was like one of the best like kind of yeah. like side notes of the game was, was uh, JJ's like podcast just playing randomly throughout the yeah. game as you're swinging around jj alex jones jameson yeah exactly yikes just oh my god yeah it's so fucking well done and it's 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 well written too it's not right. just like oh it's funny or it's stupid or whatever it's like when you listen to what he's saying and how he's talking and stuff like that yeah that has such a note of like current climate like politics and everything yeah. in it it's so it's so well written i i mean for the end, till the end of my days, I'm never going to hear J. Jonah Jameson and not think of J.K. Uh, Simmons, Oh, right? of course. No, J.K. Simmons is, is like, J. Jonah Jameson. There's he, there's no uh, one else at this it's point. It's so goddamn good. 
It's so it's like good. um whenever you hear a a drill sergeant right who who is it Arlie Ermey it's Arlie Ermey that's it the guaranteed hands down Arlie Ermey every single time well, so. I mean it could be Dale Die but almost certainly it's <laughs> Arlie Ermey ninety nine point nine percent of the time <laughs> what is your major malfunction numb nuts yeah, yeah so we all know how it is but ultimately uh, yeah overall the game was just fucking spectacular yeah. the the boss fights were amazing that like one of the most amazing parts of the whole game was the event where they do the prison break and right. then you have to go to the raft and then that's where you get introduced to the sinister six of the game right and holy fuck that cinematic is just well, epic <laughs> like you, you couldn't stop at any point in the whole series you're just going from area to area to area and it's like just no pause for breath, no like break in the action. Yeah. It's just like, oh my god, right. shit's going. Oh, Spider Man! Crazy. Someone's attacking the guy's car. Spider Man! There's a helicopter leaving. There's there's criminals on it. Oh, someone's gonna fall off that rooftop. It's like, oh, can I get a break? <laughs> it's like every every three hours, I get fifteen minutes. Yeah. Save them yourself. Yeah. Um, Tell it to the and, union. Yeah, and it was just yeah, just absolutely spectacular. That that middle sequence there, right. where they all come together and. Uh, Doc Ock is there as the ringleader and everything like that. I'm like, holy fuck, this just hit a new level. We've got some actually some interesting Spider-Man news for people who are, are looking to buy a PlayStation these days. Oh, really? Okay, yes, so that, that's gonna main, main kill is going to be very interested in that. I know actually Kelly has been uh, talking about it. Kelly, the comic guy, after yeah. Spider-Man's been just so big. I mean, honestly, yeah. the, the game, if you play it on easy, it'd be easy enough for him to play it even if he's not a huge gamer. Friendly. And I think he'd have an absolute blast with yeah. it, just being a comic book guy. Especially after they tweak the, the friendly difficulty. Yes, Because it was not so friendly. Yeah, you, you still had some issues in there. You really? had to still pay attention to what you were doing yep. um but yeah overall just yep absolutely amazing experience i loved all the boss fights um the uh, i i liked all the boss fights except for mr negative or or lee uh what's his right. name um Mar martin lee i think right um his was was creative i guess it was just i think it was too easy like comparatively I'm, comparatively to the other ones i i found it a little too easy maybe it was because you were fighting him by yourself rather than the other ones being duo boss fights no i can see it but the uh i absolutely love the rhino and scorpion fight i think that was probably one of the best parts yep. of the entire game well what was the other one that was uh, rhino they had, scorpion there was the vulture and electro uh, electro yeah because they could both fly and they right. were at the power plant and what was uh, the other one and uh well then you had doc ock by himself and you had martin lee by himself Right and uh, and there you had Shocker like earlier on in the game, but he was like a standalone because he's like he's like the joke villain. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean that was really, probably the most effective I've ever seen the Shocker. I really I really dug the the costume builds in this. Like right. they did a great job on on you could recognize who they were from a mile away. Yeah, but they really modernized and it made it feel like it belongs in this game. Even the Shocker, like the Shocker, felt like more of a villain in this one right. than he normally does because normally he is just the butt of everyone's joke and he doesn't do much but in this yeah. one they really made him kind of stand out and the chase sequence with him was was so much fun not just mechanically but a thing i like about it is that if there was ever any exposition that had to happen frequently you're going to be like talking to the boss in the middle of combat yes. and yeah. he's like you're actually getting information and it, like fleshing out the story at the it same reminded time. me of uncharted how they do it so seamlessly like that because right. they will have banter while something's happening rather than either cutting away to a cutscene or giving you like you yeah. know a little you know like fucking animatics or whatever in between like it was yeah they they did a great job especially again back to the the rhino what? that is a christmas coffee yes yeah, so they, yeah they're already bringing out their christmas cups <laughs> i mean it's it's gonna happen <laughs> um between the rhino and the scorpion yeah. because not only do you have banter with them because they're like the both the, kind of like the, the jocks or the idiots of the of those villains because they're you know, they just run around, they smash stuff, basically. So it's really funny, the banter that Spider-Man has with them, but also right. that they have with each other, because they keep blaming each other for yep. losing. And it was just, yeah, it was so fucking well done. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and ultimately the end was, um, it, it was satisfying, but also mm -hmm. very sad because of Aunt May. <laughs> it was like... What I did not see that coming whatsoever. I like, mean... Not, not just that fact, but yeah. the fact that... Uh, it wasn't like, oh, it's just too late or whatever. Like, Spider-Man, like, Peter Parker had that choice. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, well, like, you could see that frustration there. Don't worry about it. Eventually, he'll make a deal with the devil and Aunt May <laughs> will be back alive again. <laughs> uh, but anyways, oh, yeah. So, um, overall, I would give it, like, like, nine and a half out of ten. Yep. Like, it was almost 
almost a perfect experience. It was yep. just so fucking well done. Good job, Insomniac. I'd say a game that can make even the collectibles interesting on their own, like yes. individually. Yeah, like the That's side surprising. missions, the collectibles, just right. everything in that world. If you want to pursue it, it's right. it's typically very entertaining and it's worth doing because you get something out of it. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, uh, absolutely awesome. If you haven't played Spider-Man yet, go fucking play it because uh, it's it's absolutely worth it. Yeah, it's still selling extraordinarily well. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's still selling full price. This was one of those ones I kind of questioned at first. Of like, oh, they say it's like a twenty-hour game. Is that worth the eighty dollars? This fucking game is worth eighty dollars. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Rurutu calls us nerds. <laughs> wow. Pot Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Rurutu. So, what have you been playing, good sir? Red Dead, of course. <laughs> but let's let's get into it a little more now that you've had a little more time to kind of sit and stew with it. I guess it's pretty good. You guess it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know what else I could possibly say. Like the the review that I wrote for PSU.com, which if you go to PSU.com is still pinned right at the top of the page. It's it's important news. <laughs> it is a it is a glowing review, and I mean, uh, all things considered, uh, aside from some control issues like which are pretty endemic to all the rockstar games yeah um, i i thought is the it game kind was of like well, a like well, a clunkiness well because of the anime like the animations and stuff no, like that or because that's what i found like with rockstar because they're they're not canned animations but they're like reactive animations and everything like there there's no. some, there's a little bit of physics in it so sometimes when you go to do something you'll feel a little clunky trying to turn or react no. to something no there's nothing like that the, the only problems i had with it were when you were trying to do like inventory management when you had like uh some stuff that you had to try to pick up and maybe there's a guy on the ground that you're trying to loot and you're just trying to target the right thing oh okay oftentimes if there's stuff that's stacked up or in close proximity you can like l1 and r1 through them to swap through the items that are right. available so and that's fine um the only other thing that i had was when you're getting off the horse because your horse is basically like your uh, additional inventory for anything that you're not carrying with you at the time mm -hmm. so you you ready your sidearms you ready your long guns and uh, when you go off, get off your horse, sometimes what you take with you isn't always what you had before, or you'll oh, get off and you okay. won't have it. Like, because if you stowed it on your saddle, you yep. might not pick it up again. And they don't have, like, an automated uh, kit, as no, it were? Like, it's really? like, whatever time I leave, no. this is the items that I want, kind of no. thing? And so, I mean, that was kind of... I, I'm sure that's going to be like a patched thing. Like it, it's just quality it, of life. Stuff. It seems, yeah, it seems like a quality of life right. thing. It seems like something you could update a part of the UI to sure. have that available. My only other gripe is directly related to the lack of liars dice. Well, that is definitely a huge <laughs> gripe. I was surprised you didn't knock four points off right there for right. that. Right. Well, I mean. <laughs> We haven't seen the online if if, if Liar's Dice isn't in the online. Right? Yeah. Because, I mean, they added, like, uh, a bunch of uh, stuff was, like, the Liars and Cheats pack for Red Dead, uh, Red Dead Redemption 1. Yeah. So I don't remember if Liar's Dice was in it from the beginning or if it was oh, added with it, it that could patch. have been an added. Because it was fairly, fairly soon. So, I mean, it's possible. Who knows? All I know is that I don't have uh, Liar's Dice now. <laughs> so what, so what, what was the actual other issue that you the had? The actual other issue I had. Uh, in the game, much like um, Grand Theft Auto V, and actually like uh, uh, Ballad of Gay Tony, so those ones, you have a, like a, a series of uh, optional objectives. Okay. And uh, if you get all of those, you get like a gold medal for that mission. Okay. Yeah. Right. So uh, the thing was, unlike every other Grand Theft Auto game, or like um, I, I don't know if La Noire did it as well, but um, I think the original Red Dead did it as well, but. Uh, the check marks aren't cumulative. So if you go through a mission once, you have yep. to get all of them oh, at once right. to have them yep. all qualify for a gold. If you start again, you're starting from scratch again. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of games that'll be like, right. do it this way and then get these extra things. But if you nailed three out of four, those right. three stay, and then you just have to go yep. back and do it that one other time. usually they're mutually exclusive. Like you can't do X and also do Y. Yeah, yeah just... exactly. But anyway... The big problem is that when you do those replay missions, they don't give you your loadout at that point, like when you're in that mission. Oh, so you could have blown a whole bunch of ammunition, a whole bunch of consumables. No, you start and... off with like 
basic everything. You don't have any equipment. You have some guns. You have only a small amount of ammunition. You don't have any tonics. You don't have a, a good horse. Oh, so it has the same starting point every yes. every time. Okay. So your, your stats aren't built up. Your horse is crappy. Yeah. And you're often doing missions where speed is a factor or getting shot is a that, factor. That sounds exactly like the... Uh, naked snake missions in right. metal gear solid five that are just maddening because it's just like this guy's a super soldier badass with all these crazy weapons and all this right. tech and gear and everything like that and all of a sudden they they slam you down in these these expert missions where they throw you out the fucking door and you you literally have a pair of pants on and a knife and and they're well, like all right go fucking do it and then they give you like 50 different things to do in the mission to be fair uh, I did all those <laughs> those were possible they were hard but they were possible they were fucking crazy hard. right but in this one, like the way the the objectives are structured and the, the very small amount of life you have to start with, mm -hmm. your horse is like a level one piece of shit and you're trying to like, you have to finish a mission where you have to like gallop from one place to another in two minutes. Yeah. And your horse is constantly tired <laughs> and you're constantly tired. You, you have to swim for a bit and you're like wipe out all your stamina and then you have to row a boat and it's like, how is this possible? So like... In some of them, it's just very, very challenging. In others, it's outright impossible to achieve these gold medals. And, of course, you need that to get a platinum. Mm -hmm. So if you are a trophy hunter, which a lot of people are, um, that's going to be a rough fucking ride unless you go back and play again from scratch and try to do it. Like, make a manual save, yep. do that mission. If you don't get gold, reload. Like, that would drive me insane to have to start... A hundred hours worth of game over that, again. That definitely sounds like something that they're probably going to correct in, in a, a later update. I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. Because like every other game that Rockstar has done like this, mm -hmm. they're always a cumulative effect, and your your starting loadout is at least sufficient to get you through the mission. So either they got to change their requirements or bump up your starting position something. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, I wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> like when I'm trying to do the replays after the fact, you're supposed to get 70 gold medals out of, I think it is 100, it's just just under or just over 100 missions, yeah. right? And I checked to see how many I had by accident. I had two. Oh my God. <laughs> so y these are not objectives you would just naturally do. And Rudy says, at least you didn't have to dodge 200 lightnings in a row. <laughs> Easier. <laughs> I did that twice. <laughs> once for the PS2 and once for the remake on PS3. And I actually got the trophy on that. You can check it. Oh, there you go. Much easier. <laughs> There's actually um, a trick to that. There's no trick to this. So so from, from a lot of the videos and GIFs that I've yeah. seen coming out of this game, it seems like Cougars aren't the uh, like number one apex predator in this anymore. It seems more like horned beasts are i mean they'll because knock they, you over they will fucking run you down out of nowhere <laughs> i'm okay with that i mean yeah they, they come out of nowhere they hit you it's like oh that's inconvenient meanwhile i i swear to god i came upon one yesterday i was exploring a part of the map like way off in the corner turns out it was like a uh a hovel up there that had some collectibles in it and stuff so i, I was just checking out the edges of the map yeah where i hadn't actually filled out and it was like dead of the night don't don't go to the edge of the map in the dead of the night that's where the cougars live well that, that's how they keep you in the map it's just know, a wall of cougars around the whole thing you know now that i've found it he scribbles it into the map so you can see the picture of the cougar <laughs> before that it was just blank space just, just girl, this little smiley face cougar on the yeah. map <laughs> here there be cougars fun fact as well john marston way worse fucking artist yeah than the main character Yes. So anyway. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so Scribble's on the thing. Cougar. So I'm, I'm on this mountainside, and it was the middle of the night, and I swear to God, I looked at this thing. I didn't realize it was, like, quite as dark as it was. Yeah. G glowing eyes and shit oh, no. coming through the grass. I'd be like, what the fuck is that? Is it a, is it a chupacabra? <laughs> and I swear to God, this thing, like, leaps on me and just chews my neck out, and I just is, and I bleed out. And it's just instant death. There is no, oh, gee, I'm getting attacked by a cougar. I best get my gun. No, it's have, like... Do you have, like, anti-cougar spray or something? <laughs> well, you do have a, uh, like, a, a, a um, like, a cream you can put on that masks human scent okay. for hunting. Um, that's fine and dandy if you think to apply that and the cougar has not already seen you. Oh, okay. Once that happens... 
So if, if you see a cougar in the grass, you can't like throw the cream at it and it'll no, run away. <laughs> no, I actually had a moment where uh, I had like literally a revenant fight with a bear where the bear was chewing the shit out of me and, and you're just shanking yeah, it you, no you, you hammer the button to get away and yeah. literally you're crawling out on your back you're, you're like blood and, and <laughs> violence everywhere from here to year and you like back out and you have like one chance you bring up your gun and it's like boom in the face as it you know, like yells at you so yeah the bear attack child's play yeah by comparison um so cougars obviously very dangerous Fuck they're like cougars. they're basically like one hit kills is there a medal that you have to chase after to hunt cougars like do you get a i am is there like a certain. gold level medal in in the trophies or whatever to hunt like <laughs> to kill one cougar just to kill one fucking cougar i have killed cougars before but it sounds like yeah. they always hunt you do you get to hunt a cougar at any point well i mean yeah if you you're going out specifically for cougars you put the cream on you stay still you wait yeah you can hunt a cougar typically it's like Holy shit, it's a cougar. Luckily, I have a shotgun in my hand already. Yeah. Into dead eye in the face. Right. Dead cougar, but... that know. The best way to hunt a cougar is to allow it to hunt you and then dead eye it in the face. Right, <laughs> right. If you have enough time to actually get that. But yeah, it's... <laughs> cougars fucking suck. Hmm. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> have a ptsd there from cougars i mean i always did but before they were just everywhere you yeah. know it was like crazy i mean it makes sense that they're not everywhere now because they're clearly more deadly than they were in the past game yes yes and larger i believe they, yeah they, they were they were deadly in numbers in the first one now they're just yes you know deadly by themselves in this one the good news is your, your horse is a lot more durable so it's not just whack dead yeah. horse so <laughs> well because you need to keep your horse in this one right so well, yeah you, you do in the previous game too like that was one of the trophies you had to like keep the the same horse for like that was it was a trophy though missions. it wasn't as necessary this one it's well, like you you build that horse yeah. throughout well, the you, entire game you and... build up a bond in the first game but i don't think there was anything like uh, uh like additional stats for it yeah anything, yeah but, exactly yeah all right so welcome ladies and gentlemen this is of course digital fiasco live episode 46 for november the 5th and it's remember remember the 5th of november i remembered that <laughs> guy fox did not drink starbucks i'm sorry <laughs> well he didn't live in this era either so <laughs> that is true all right so uh of course we're going to be talking about all the latest news in playstation xbox nintendo and pc gaming and uh first of all we always like to start with the picks of the week from the triple d all right uh disc downloads and dlc for this week uh there's actually some tasty little games coming out this week a lot of good games this week um first up this is one that i've been watching for a while i unfortunately didn't buy in when it was cheaper and then the price kind of went up and up uh as it was still in early access but now it's finally leaving early access on steam xbox and ps4 Uh, i think it's supposed to get a switch release at some point too but that'll be down the road this is grip so Rip. this is a futuristic racer akin to kind of like Wipeout, but with um, big off-road wheels on them. So sure. you have like crazy futuristic tracks, but you can drive on the roof and the walls and everything else like that. Huh. And if anyone out there remembers the game Roll Cage yes. for PlayStation, this is some of the same developers or some of the same people that worked on the original Roll Cage. So sure. this is a spiritual successor to Roll Cage. The Plaid Venice also wants to remind everyone that Destiny 2 is free on PC for the next couple of weeks. Oh, yes, of course, because they got, a, they got their, free, their hooks in everyone. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> no, that's how they get you. That's how they get you. Resist the fucking Destiny 2 <laughs> treadmill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Thanks. so so uh grip is coming out i'm definitely looking forward to that one it looks fucking awesome yep. actually we just had uh one of our fellow psu guys do a great big review on grip so oh shit okay PSU. i gotta com. check that out then yeah it's it was apparently quite fun and where can we find that uh psu.com all right then yes <laughs> is that one pinned to the top like your fancy red dead review i don't think it is okay well i have to go hunting for it but yes i look forward to reading that because i i do want to know if it's everything that it's going to be cracked up to be yep um one of the other ones coming out another racing game road redemption is finally leaving early access yes. and coming out in its full-fledged form now i don't recall if this was the better one yeah see and that was the thing is it was funny road redemption came out first in early access and mm. then there was kind of a, a flood of about two or three other uh yeah. like like after no road 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 rash, road rash like kind years. of type games but some of them died off some of them kind of kept going forward but road redemption i think is the first one to actually make it out of early access into a, a full game maybe we could have our streamstress go and check the uh the metacritic on road redemption yeah because i would like to know because again being a huge fan yeah. of road rash when i was younger 
Um, I was really looking forward to something that was a modernized version of it. We just haven't gotten that yet. Wasn't there another one like called Road Rage or something? It was like something uh, very similar. Yes, I believe so. So one of them was not great. Yeah, one, one of them was, was not okay. great, and then the other one was was good, but it, it was getting better because it was right. still early access. So right. I think that was Road Redemption. I don't know why EA just doesn't do it unless they're like worried about promoting street violence. <laughs> I, uh... I think it might come down to that. It's the same reason why they've kind of... They've tried to step away even with the the Need for Speed games. They try okay. to step away from like really glorifying street racing and stuff like that too. And yet somehow they thought releasing Battlefield Hardline was a good idea. Yeah, well, I mean, like not only from a content point of view, but from a quality point of view. It's EA. <laughs> Yikes! All right, what else we got? Yes, in Commander Town, we do need some, a Road Rash game, something we bad. We do, like a like a real one. Yeah, seventy one Metacritic. That's not okay. Terrible. So that's not bad. That's I'm not sure, I'm sure it would be a blast to play. And yes, Return Fire is. Yes, awesome. Return Fire, as I had talked about a couple yeah. weeks ago. Hey, Chico, how you doing? Um, and there's a uh, there's another one that. I remember seeing a trailer for it a while back, and it was kind of interesting, and now it's apparently it's just one of the ones that snuck under the radar, and it's coming out. It's called Steel Rats, and this is a... I don't even have that on my list. This what is a is that? Uh, 2.5D um, platformer, oh. but you drive a motorcycle that has saw blades for wheels. No, so I remember this now and why I didn't write it down. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, go on. So I, I went and took a look at the trailer, because I the, the art looked kind of interesting, yeah. and I just wanted to know what the hell it was. So I took a look at the trailer. It looks kind of interesting. <laughs> if you like some classic, like, kind of, like, 2d platformer type of action game but you're on a motorbike the whole time so you're constantly like moving forward or you can skid and go back the other way but your bike like you're riding your motorbike the whole time and it is your weapon so the front wheel of the motorbike is a flaming saw blade so you Mm -hmm. run over and chop up everything that's in front of you so they have a lot of interesting traversal uh traversal ways and level they have some interesting boss fights and whatnot so it looks it looks kind of neat and definitely came out of nowhere um and then a really big one that uh I completely forgot was coming out, and I'm very excited to play, is Tetris Effect. Yes, indeed. Because, again, I talked about this a while ago. I'm a huge fan of Tetris. Yep. Um, I've owned multiple iterations of it throughout uh, throughout the years, and this is just the newest, freshest, most awesome version of it. So yep. this one is made by the same guys that did Res, so visually yep. it is so fucking on point. Uh, and I believe you can play this one in, in PSVR also. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, which is just... I'm sure they'll be mind-blowing <laughs> at that point, because... Uh, they the the res guys they do such a good job with with their visuals and like their laser effects and and particle effects and everything. So adding that to a proper Tetris game, uh, I'm really really digging that. Uh, and then yeah, so that one's coming out. And uh, this one I I never remember exactly what this game is. It's the forest. Oh yes. And so this one you know a bit more about. <laughs> Can you explain what this game is? Um. Because no. I, I, every time I hear the forest, yeah. I think it's Rust. And no. I know it's not Rust. <laughs> no, it is a it is a single player game. Although I think the PS4 one does support co op multiplayer. Okay, it is a single player slash co op multiplayer survival game mm-hmm. where you crash. You have a plane crash. Okay, and you land in the woods, and uh, you have to build things to survive. So you craft stuff, and it turns out that. You're not alone in the forest, and some oh, things right. happen. Yes, yeah, so I think there's like fucking cannibals or something that live <gasps> in the forest, or some evil minion things that that attack you at night, and you have to like craft during the day and survive during the night or something like that. I think. Let's just say that the it it, it can be tense at times. Yes, yeah. but I know that yes. this one has been in early access for a yes. long fucking time, yes. so it's good to see that this one is finally coming out. Yeah, it's it's a good one. I mean, I if you like uh, survival games or you know those uh tense co-op sort of build up and survive type games yeah i would really really definitely endorse the forest creepy as hell and uh the plaid menace uh we did get a remaster of burnout paradise on ps4 we so did. if you didn't know about that one go yes. check it out because it is fucking awesome i yeah, love actually, burnout paradise. Uh, i believe last weekend it was on sale for like twelve dollars oh no way yeah holy shit I it was like still on sale <laughs> double discounts i mean they, they had like a huge sale like on all those ones for uh for that publisher so for ea yeah and i mean i'm just glad that it has been a, a good success for them because ea needs to remaster certain other things well and that's the whole thing is again this is one of those events where you can vote with your wallet so <laughs> right. you buy remasters from <clears throat> ea right instead of their new garbage <laughs> then then go with it like get those remasters and show them that that yeah. that you want some of those is that why battlefield 5 pre-bookings are in the toilets <laughs> 
It's it's possible. It's, it's not possible. great. Um, okay. okay, so what else you got on your list there? Oh, I got a bunch of stuff. So, uh, interestingly enough, Grim Fandango just had its 20th anniversary. Oh, no way. So they just released a Switch version of Grim Fandango Remastered. It's already available. Awesome. So, so that w- I wonder if that that's the remastered version we got for the PS3, probably. I believe? Well, actually, it was on the PS4, Or was it the PS4? Yeah. It's probably the same version, but now it's available on the Switch. Apparently, there's talk that there might be a sequel discussed very soon Interesting. for the, the anniversary. Uh, Moonlighter is available on the Switch starting, mm. I believe, today, the I 5th. S- still have to play that one. Such a good game. <laughs> Such a good game. Uh, for On the 6th, for Tuesday, Carnival Games comes out for PS4 and Switch. Uh, Deracine or Deracine? Deracine. Is the, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't even want. Right. I didn't want to try because I didn't know how to say it. So. <laughs> it it's the From Software weird, ghostly French uh, revolution game that's excellent but weird. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know much about it. <laughs> I'm killed Cicerone on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> uh, here's one that I find interesting and terrifying all at the same time. And it's coming out tomorrow for PS4. Okay. Jagged Alliance Rage. Okay. Now, I saw that one on the list, but they yeah. didn't have any information, so I thought maybe it was uh, so are redacted. You not, are you not familiar with Jagged Alliance? Oh, I'm fully uh, I'm fully aware of it, because right. I played that years ago. Right. So yeah. Jagged Alliance, Jagged Alliance 2, yeah, um, see, Wildfire, a bunch of other On shit. the actual PlayStation right. drop, it says release date postponed. Oh, do they so, take yeah, it back? It looks like it's been redacted for now. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but mm. um, it, well, it, they might just want to put it in a better window. Um, but yeah, Jagged Alliance was, um, oh, what the hell is it? There's a World War II game that it was, I think, based off of, or that was like You're very similar Silent to. Silent Storm? Was it Silent Storm? I know, it was, it's one of those like 2.5D, quick oh, point no, tactical oh, kind of. you thinking thing. Commandos. Oh, was it Commandos? Commandos? Oh, shit, yeah. No, Commandos was real time. Jagged Alliance was kind of like XCOM, but you were running a mercenary group. Yes, yeah, yeah. I guess I got the yeah, I got those two mixed up. Yeah. And I thought they they were similar though, aren't they? Yeah, I mean they're yeah. kind of. They're, it was like an isometric perspective. Yeah, and, yeah. But it was like all over the world. You had various mercenaries. It was a hard game too, because like XCOM, right? If your mercenary died, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'm curious because they they haven't done anything with Jagged Alliance in a long time, and that was a super popular game back in the day. So. I'm uh, looking forward to that. Uh, Transpose came out for PSVR tomorrow. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure that the it's very art, lawnmower man. The art looked very interesting. Yeah, yeah, very much like that. But I had no idea what it was. So. Uh, I believe that there is a review up for that on PSU. I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, it's going to be up in time for the embargo. Uh, Minecraft Story Mode Season Two comes out for Switch. Uh, that's the physical version, I guess. Right. Uh, Rogue Legacy comes out for Switch oh, on the 6th. Oh, that's such a good game. It's a very good game. I mean, it's it's been around for years and yep. years, but hey, if you got a Switch and hey. you've never played it or you want to play it again... It's... Rogue Legacy on the go, man. That's that's where it is. Yeah. Uh, Bug Butcher comes out for Switch on the 8th. Oh, so Bug Butcher. That Bug was a good Butcher one, too. Bug Butcher is always good, yeah. I had that one on my Steam account. Yeah, so check out PSU.com for the week's other big releases for PlayStation 4. Um, we also have some news, of course, on the PlayStation Plus and the Xbox course, Games with Gold. Beginning of the month. It is. And this is going to be a good goddamn month. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm looking forward to pretty much everything they've got there. <laughs> so first and foremost, everybody on PS Plus gets Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. Yep. So right away, if you were one of the ones, unlike myself and Steve, who played the shit out of Bulletstorm... <laughs> You need to play this game because yep. it is it is kind of a uh, the storyline's stupid. It's throwaway. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, it was it was supposed to be yeah. ridiculous. You got Steve Bloom as the voice, and like they say, dick a lot, they, like, a lot, like in place um, of every other swear. Would you say it was an egregious amount? I would not. <laughs> I would not. Like son of a dick. What the dick? <laughs> yep. Anyway, uh, but it is such a fun and. Uh, just the, the way you can make combo, uh, combos with the lash and your weapons and the environments. I remember playing, oh. I believe it was on your 360. I got to play uh, like two levels of right. it and I had a blast with it. It was yeah. really, really well oh, done. A lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of fun with that. So everyone gets that. Sit down, play it. Especially if you do it multiplayer, it's a lot of fun. But even more importantly, <laughs> more, more everyone importantly, listening right now, <laughs> everybody on PS Plus gets a copy of Yakuza Kiwami. Yep. Which is the very first Yakuza game remastered for the PS4, and it is amazing. This this is them smacking down that line of coke in front of you. Like, right. hey, snort it up. You're going to oh. love this. And then, you know, I the, mean, the first taste is free, yeah. gentlemen. <laughs> Yakuza Kwame is such a good vehicle for it because it has an excellent story. There's like a mystery to it. You also have the new uh, Majima Anywhere mode. Yep. So Majima Goro will pop out everywhere and fuck you up. 
Uh, oh, I mean, the game is so good. And the remaster and, uh, is even better. Commander Sam just said he's actually excited for you. You should be. Yeah, so. Also. Let's say, if you ever want to talk about yeah. Yakuza, talk to this man right oh, yes. here. I, I am like the <laughs> He knows the talking. series like inside out. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, I believe around the same time that uh, 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 Burnout Paradise was on sale, yeah. Yakuza Zero was also on sale for $15. Oh, okay. Now. See, it begins. <laughs> I would not recommend you play Yakuza Zero. Even though it's the, a prequel to the entire series, right. I would not recommend you play that until you get, like, two or three games into the series. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. So play Kiwami, play 2 and 3. Right. They, they're coming out, I believe? Like, 2 and 3? They... Uh, 2 is already out. 2 is already it. out. Okay. Uh, 3 is not going to be a... It's not going to be a remaster. It's going to be... Okay, it's going to be a re-release... But it's going to be kind of, uh, it's a PS3 game as opposed to a PS2 game. So it's game. just like upscaled, like, right. it, you know, polished up a little bit, right. but it's not that ground up, like, remaster. Yeah, so it's going to be like some of the other remasters you see where it's not going to be like a ground up rebuild. Mm -hmm. So, uh, re so re play, release, I don't know. play one, two, and three before yes. you play zero. <laughs> yes. Because zero, specifically, there is one of the most important characters in the franchise is portrayed in an entirely different way. And you see how then he evolves into the person that's in the rest of the series. Okay. So if you are not familiar with the rest of the series, you will not appreciate that transformation uh, okay. as much. Got it. So very important. But uh, for 15 bucks, put it in your library, wait to play it. Excellent game. The whole series is great. So yeah, check out Yakuza Kiwami. Also available on the PS Plus for this month. Yeah, uh, Jackbox Party Pack 2 for the PS3. Uh, I don't know what Arcado series is. It's also for the PS3. It's some kind of shmup or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But I don't know. That's It's it's PS3, so it's always hard to tell. I don't keep up on those as much, no. Also available is Burly Men at Sea, which is cross-play for PS4 and, and uh, PS Vita, and Roundabout for PS4 and PS Vita. So... Games with gold for November. You got Battlefield 1 from November 1, uh, 1st to 30th. You have Race the Sun from November uh, 16th to December 15th. Those are both for Xbox One. And you get uh, Assassin's Creed. I am assuming that is the very, very first Assassin's Creed. Wow, going all the way. Wasn't... Wait. For 360. What? Wasn't that the very first Games with Gold game that they gave away? I do not remember. I'm almost certain it was. I, I, I'm They're repeating to, themselves. <laughs> I mean, who the hell knows, right? If I went back into my PS Plus list, there's shit on there I would never have known that I had. You know, who the hell knows? Yeah. And you'll, you'll also get, shockingly enough, Dante's Inferno. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm surprised that anyone remembers that game. It wasn't a bad game. It was a it was a God of War clone. I really had an wish interesting they, twist to it. Oh, I really wish they hadn't called it Dante's Inferno. Just... <laughs> unnecessary anyway november 16th to 30th for xbox 360 and of course both of those are backwards compatible for xbox one yeah and commander sent him unfortunately yeah race the sun was kind of boring but it's it was literally a, a smartphone game yeah it was just like one of those like get as far as you can in as fast as amount of time that you can like, now, but it david was... blade are you talking about uh, dante's inferno because i didn't say i liked it i said it wasn't <laughs> bad it's no better name than disco inferno <laughs> Wow, that'd be a completely different game. <laughs> I think it, I would rather have it played as Disco Inferno, honestly. <laughs> Yikes. All right. So, now we get to the news. All right, let's do it. So, we we want to have a, an update on our Red Dead reallocation. <laughs> so, um, Amazon.ca still shows no stock of the basic version of the game. Really? Either for Xbox One or for PS4. Uh, the special edition is available. I think the... But uh, the special edition, I think, is the only one that's available directly from Amazon. You can get the ultimate edition from, like, a third-party seller, which right, is going right. to, you know, bend you over for it. <laughs> so uh, whatever the hell is going on at Amazon is still affected. My copy did not come last week. Mm -hmm. They had to ship me out a replacement copy for the replacement copy, <laughs> which was a replacement for the one that was supposed to be here on release day. Oh, my God. <laughs> so had I not had the review copy... Yeah. I'd be so angry right now. Yeah, there'd be a few more holes in your oh, walls, I think. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no. I mean, I would have just gone to 
you know, any other retailer here in the city. <laughs> anyway, uh, so some various stats about Red Dead Redemption. Apparently, Red Dead Redemption 2 made $725 million worldwide in its first three days. Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's at retail, this, not including digital. This has been the year of, like, record-breaking weekend, right. like, opening weekend sales. And it just keeps getting better and better. Because yeah, we had God crazy. of War, then we had Spider-Man, now we have Red Dead. Like, yep. it's just... And it's just one outdoing the other, outdoing the other. It's just yep. fucking insane. God of War, like, uh, Sony has revised its earnings uh, forecast three times this year. They think they're going to make an extra 100 billion yen <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, like, uh, I think it was like from 7.1 to 7.2 trillion yen they wow, expect. That's and that's crazy. in revenue. Yeah. So it, it's crazy. And, and it's like they, they revised it when they released God of War because that sold like 3.1 million in its first week. And Spider Man sold like 3.3 million in its first week. Yeah. I don't know specifically, but they said $725 million. So you can do the math. Um, so anyway, that's interesting. Uh, another fun fact about Red Dead Redemption, and you know, kind of a spoiler, but not really a spoiler. <laughs> in the game, they have part of the, the like the whole American side of the map from the first game. Yeah, is in the second game. So okay. you can go everywhere that you could in the first game in America. The funny thing is, you can't get to Mexico, but it's there, oh, or yeah? at least a lot of it. So there was a uh, YouTuber. YouTuber named, uh, where is it here? Zach Cox TV. Uh, he has discovered a crack in this invisible wall that you, you can kind of glitch through. Yeah. And a good portion of Mexico is actually there, including oh, wow. El Presidio, the yep. big, big fortress that was right on the Rio Bravo. Yeah. So uh, it's not all there, but it looks like what there is is they had like textured land masses up to a certain point mm -hmm. after which it was very sort of rudimentary terrain so it's just like they, it's so far in the back well and i'm thinking they may have just dragged and dropped the original map and then just polished up the stuff that they needed yeah yeah so once you get past that point you fall through the map and you die <laughs> makes but, sense <laughs> yeah but uh you can explore a good portion of mexico so whether yeah. or not they're gonna bring it in maybe for Red Dead Online, which I would really like to see. And she goes calling it right now, DLC. DLC. <laughs> I mean, first you'd have to get Rockstar to put out single player DLC. <laughs> maybe they will for this one. Maybe, maybe. It's entirely possible. They, but they made they made fucking seven hundred billion dollars or whatever. So like No, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But you know, I would be happy with that. But honestly, they have essentially all of the assets they need to do a remaster of the original just from leftovers from yep. the sequel. It would be really, really easy for them to just put together some cinematics, go do Red Dead 1 remastered. I would buy that in a goddamn heartbeat at mm -hmm. full price. Yep, and a lot of people would follow suit too. And that would be another $500 million in their bank account. Exactly. But Jesus Christ. So yeah, so either it's it's just there for visuals. So like when you're looking through your binoculars, it just doesn't like fall off a cliff. Yeah. But you never know. For Red Dead Online, they might bring back Mexico. That would be amazing. I would mm -hmm. love that. It's not like you don't have enough room to roam around in as it is. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's a huge goddamn <laughs> map. Again, I I think there's a better chance of it because just we've seen the support on Grand Theft Auto V. Yep. Um, because they have that support net of the money that came in from that, and they've had the overwhelming support of people buying this game, I think it proves that it's here to stay. Yep, it's you know a fan favorite. So yeah, I would. St they should move forward and actually make some more content it, for it's it. It's selling twice as fast as the original game was, so that's crazy. Yeah, not surprised at all. I mean, granted, that's a lot of that is because people are now <laughs> aware of Red Dead. Meme right? kill you. Watch your mouth. <laughs> Mexico is where they're going to put the battle rail. <laughs> I will fucking kill you. <laughs> oh, you know that. But said, they got to sell skins first. That said, yep. Could you picture like a team battle royale? Oh, you got them going. Look at look at what you did <laughs> in El Presidio. You asked for this, where you have the rebels and you have like the presidential forces. In Mexico, that would be awesome. Yeah, like defending a fort. Like I'm not, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. And that's the whole thing is, I again, mm. we we joke a lot about the battle royale format and everything like <laughs> that's that. It's but terrible. that's the whole thing is, is battle royale makes sense. Yes, it does. It, it can make sense. It can as long as it's used properly. But that's like DLC being used properly. 
99% of people don't use it fucking properly. So Dave Kill says it's a warning, not a guide. Stop. <laughs> well, you brought it on yourself, my friend. Yeah, like I said, you asked for it. <laughs> Yo, you got that sad trumpet. You asked for that. Yeah. But yeah, Battle Royal, I, I yep. mean, it could work. I don't think they're going to put it in. I think yep. it's just too much. I they're just going to have like the free reign like Grand Theft Auto Five, yeah. but in the old west. Like, they're looking to make money Grand Theft Auto Online style, right? So it's going to be Red Dead Online. It's yep. going to be you buy money awesome. bags and safe crackers and uh, all I that mean, kind of stuff. You buy outfits. You buy you, you buy horses. A, buy a neon green horse and pimp it probably, out with like racing stripes. Probably and, <laughs> farms and stuff. You know, like you'd store your horses in places bigger and bigger stables, right? That was yeah. the thing. And and oh, I'm sure there's going to be heists and stuff where you have actually. Have can I play? Can I like? I want to. I want to like raise like free range chickens or something. Can I do that? Can I pay money to do that? <laughs> yeah, it's called Farmville. <laughs> Those are not free range. <laughs> They're not grass fed even. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, one of the things I'm kind of sore about. I love Red Dead, but you know I have so many games sitting there that I have to get back to, or right. you know just two in general. Uh, one of which is still Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I still have to platinum. Uh, one of the things they're still doing, they started rolling out their their free content plan. So right. their their DLC and free content plan. Uh, the thing they're doing now is they have epic mercenaries and epic ships. So like every week they will alternate. So you have the mercenary come out. He can be randomly in the map. You okay. fight him. He has special gear that's like limited time only. It's, you know, you kill him, blah, blah, blah. Uh, epic ship, same thing. Funny thing is... Uh, get this. So October the seventeenth, Ubisoft launched their live event, and it was the their first epic mercenary was called uh, Demay the Indifferent. Okay. Apparently, he was he was so indifferent he just didn't show up for work. <laughs> Nobody could find him. No one knew where the hell he was. He wasn't spawning for everyone. <laughs> I I, I wish that that wasn't a glitch. Yeah. And he was literally sitting oh. in his house on the, on like a bed. <laughs> playing with like a fucking abacus or something like that and you find him sitting there you're like aren't you supposed to be hunting yeah i didn't feel like it <laughs> he's there with like a, a bronze helmet and he's just throwing rocks yeah it's like aren't are you supposed to be out hunting someone yeah. Yeah, maybe tomorrow <laughs> so obviously a glitch yeah. of some kind that he didn't show up <laughs> like you knew what my name was when you hired me yeah. what were you expecting <laughs> So yes, to me the indifferent. So that a lot of people made jokes about that. Shockingly enough, yeah. Uh, so they canceled that event. So next week they had an epic ship that went fine, which is good because ship battling is awesome. And then uh, October thirtieth they had a new mercenary, and it had the same effect. He didn't spawn. Oh, okay. So they canceled it again. So as of like last week, all of these epic mercenary events are permanently canceled till they figure out what the fuck is going on. So, I mean, I haven't gotten back to it. I apparently missed an epic ship. Hopefully, I can still catch up and, like, maybe loop back. Yeah. But um, I'm not missing that, at least for the time being. <laughs> I mean, so, it's, it's just like, they should just name all, like, the mercenaries just so they don't fucking show up. It's just like, you know, Damacus the yeah. Unpresent and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> go, go old school, Eric the Unready. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah uh get this though this week's epic ship right now instead of that they're doing like an epic ship contract every week okay so this week's epic ship contract is a corinthian ship called the tyrant which is apparently on its maiden voyage and they say it's gonna rumor has it the ship will redefine naval warfare for sparta so that sounds imposing um big fucking ship Just two ships taped together with more cannons on it. <laughs> that would be imposing yeah <laughs> So apparently Assassin's Creed Odyssey, here's an interesting fact. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is doing so well and, and better than expected. Ubisoft actually, they expect it to outperform Far Cry 5 this year. Which really? Was, yeah, which was a huge That was a big for one for yeah. them, definitely. And I think it was the best Far Cry that they've ever done, apparently. So Yeah, like it, it got good reviews. It right. sold really well. Yeah. And that's really interesting because Odyssey, again, was one of those ones that was kind of a shot in the dark, at least in my head anyways, yeah. because you just had a you know beginning prequel that right. was origins and then you go before that with odyssey it was strange and it was just very kind of strange in my head yeah and also it was just because it wasn't so much assassin's creed because they were trying to like introduce kind of like these new mechanics and you weren't even sure like well yeah, that was origins then what's happening here so I mean, in my it head is... i was just like i thought this this yeah. one was 
like not obviously not like dead on arrival but i thought it was just gonna be like oh yeah it's one of their extra releases that they do kind of like um brotherhood uh like rogue was no brotherhood was was huge yeah that that's was, exactly the same thing that one though. was fucking awesome brother people people loved Ezio. well yeah odyssey they like didn't know what to bite onto for this one but i mean uh you know Al- uh, alexios and uh, cassandra were yeah. both like very charismatic characters so i mean you know they're greek uh, that that know, helps they're swarthy <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, they're very good characters, but it's largely the same thing as, like, Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood. They have, uh, like, all the maps built, the engine is built, they just, you know, transpose it into a slightly different area, and mm-hmm. you're in, uh, what was it, it was uh, in Constantinople instead of in Rome. So, same thing with this, you're in, uh, you're, you're just a little bit further north, Yeah. you know, so uh, you, you had, like, um, Alexandria, so you had all the Greek structures already, it was just kind of, uh, of variations on that to go even further north and actually expand it outward, because you still had naval combat and whatnot, but it wasn't as important, so... Yeah. Yeah, so it is the same thing, and then they actually did improve a lot of the systems too. So for Origins, I think that seems to be the big selling yeah. point with this one is that it just seems like it's better to play. Like they just updated the mechanics and the fighting yes. so much that it yeah feels like a new game. And none of your abilities are worthless either. So uh, like unlike you can kind of specialize in a certain area, and then eventually you're just spending points to spend them. Yeah. In Origins, in this one, the way it was structured, it was actually very well done. So. Uh, yeah, everyone who hasn't played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, definitely do that. <laughs> yeah, she was says, he has yet to buy that game and too many others. Yeah, see. We hear you, man. <laughs> you want to compare backlogs. <laughs> it, it's kind of like measuring, it's like a dick measuring contest, except the guy with the biggest backlog is ashamed. <laughs> it's like a reverse dick measuring contest. Let's just say that my backlog wouldn't fit on a CBS receipt anytime soon. So. No, <laughs> no. All right, so uh, we're well into the fourth quarter release schedule. Um, especially, yeah, it's fucking November well, already. We're now that the we're eclipse down there. has moved on for Red Dead <laughs> Two. Right, we're coming out of the shadow. We're starting to see some releases again. It's mostly downhill from here, though. Like all the the big names are out. Uh, the only really big one left. I mean, and I don't call Just Cause Four a really big one. It's going to be, you know... I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be okay. But I I love those games because they're Eh. just so fucking ridiculous. You know, it's going to be decent. I still have to finish Just Cause 3. I just, you know, I'm not super jazzed for Just Cause 4, but I'm sure it'll be good fun. But anyway, the the, the only really big, big release, like the AAA release that I'm I'm hearing at this point would be Battlefield 5 because that's still out there, right? Yes. It was supposed to come out like just before Red Dead or on the week of Red Dead, whatever the, whatever the hell it was. So uh, yeah. they're trying to stay out of Red Dead's way, so instead they like waded out it's in deeper water. very smart on yeah. their part. Because <laughs> they already had like terrible pre-booking numbers. Apparently uh, it, they revised their, uh, their sales numbers downward. Uh, EA stock has actually dropped in price by like 50 cents or a dollar over the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's now delayed till November the 20th, so it's going to be out in like three weeks, two, three weeks. I don't know. It's today's the 5th, so do the math on that. <laughs> you do the math. Yeah. I hate math. So uh, the question is, at this point, is it far enough out for the people, you know, they played COD Blobs 4, Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, COD yeah. Blobs 4, as we like to call it, or as I like to call it. Um, is it far enough out that people are going to get sick of that, and now, hey, I need another game, here's battlefield five yeah um hey benita boom crash welcome to the chat hey, yeah Benito. everyone buy ea stock right now you'll maybe get rich hey. possibly who knows <laughs> it's some nice stock we'd be ashamed if something would happen to uh, us fallout 76 the test servers are up right now the betas yeah yeah the betas up right now but yeah i can't remember when exactly the the full game comes out i am i haven't been tracking that and one because i'm eternal do I, that doesn't come out till like next that's year a that's yeah. a waste uh, so like anyway, we just saw gameplay on that on like E3 this year. So, so uh, Battlefield Five pre-bookings are in the toilet. Um, it's apparently the, the, their pre-bookings are tracking at 85 percent behind Ooh. Call of Duty Black Ops Four. Oh, that's sharp. That is not great. So uh, they've revised their sales targets across the board. Um, despite all of this, there is a very interesting <laughs> aspect to the game. <laughs> I love when they revise their sales. Numbers. Oh, look at those numbers. Nobody's pre-ordering. No. Let's revise those. Not going to sell as much. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they have to tell their investors, right, yeah, what to expect. Yeah. Apparently, the, the, their revenue for the uh, quarter ending in December is down a third of a billion dollars. <laughs> so $300 million from $2, po- $2 billion to $1.73 billion. That's what they expect. to. So they, they've definitely taken a huge hit. Mm-hmm. So 
interesting mechanical change to Battlefield 5. So you ever been in a game, like you, you play in a game and your side starts losing and people start jumping ship? Yeah, yeah. There is no button in Battlefield 5 to change sides. Good. At all. <laughs> That's the way it fucking should be. I mean, presumably there's still auto balancing, but you cannot defect. <laughs> sure. if, you're, if you're facing off against the Germans, right? At, you know the front trench lines and stuff. Like, oh shit, they're winning. I'm gonna go over here, guys. I'm a German now. Like, it doesn't fucking work that way. Hey, Klaus, <laughs> uh, are, are we the baddies? <laughs> You don't just get to put a fucking helmet on and you get to join the other team. That's not how that shit works. Yeah, uh, Betty Grable, Mickey Mouse, uh, 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 Fifth Avenue, uh, yeah, Bugs Bunny. Oh, it's fucking ridiculous. Yes. So uh, that's interesting. I mean, a lot of people kind of said, "Oh, I don't like that," but you know, from my perspective, ah. Uh, Look, you you stay on that sinking ship, and you keep fighting. Right. Like you try to fight back. If you're gonna lose, yep. you fucking lose. You don't get to just jump to the winning team. Oh, everybody wins. Don't worry yeah. about it. It's like, what the fuck is the point then? I'm assuming also that they're gonna do punishment for people who like disconnect early. Like, oh, absolutely, early. they better. I hope so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> fun fact. Uh, so in Call of Duty Black Ops Four, we're talking about that. Yeah. Uh, COD Blobs Four, <laughs> of course. So uh, the black market is back for Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and the pay-to-win nonsense that goes with it. Of course. Uh, so players can grind to earn contraband points, uh, but apparently it is painfully slow. Or players can use Call of Duty points to uh, purchase tiers that will grant them well, additional they, cosmetic items. They didn't even give it a fancy name. They Call just, of Duty points. Call of Duty points. Yeah, you purchase it with cash. Uh, so there just was a, not even fucking no, trying anymore. <laughs> no. So uh, on Reddit, uh, Reddit user Refractives, he did an analysis, a okay. lengthy post where he did the math on how long it would take to unlock uh, these tier 200 weapon variants that are like the ultimate top of the line, rarest of the rare. Okay. Uh, so uh, the good news is it's cheaper than buying an actual gun, <laughs> but it has a longer waiting period. <laughs> Oh, man. So you need to spend about $200 in real-world money to get the Call of Duty points that you would have to buy it outright. Of course. Or you'd have to spend 250-plus in-game hours, which is further complicated by the tiers and the items sometimes being limited offerings. So on a time limit, you have to spend 250 hours, hope for the best that what you want happens to be in the... In yep. the black market. And at once the time. again, we come to the root of the yep. issue with DLC content like that is that if you make shit for a game yep. and it's in the game already, you're, they're just milking it at this point. That content is That's... on the fucking disc. It exists. It is right there. That content is created it's already. Games as a service yep. in a nutshell, man. It's fucking bullshit. So uh, apparently, they've not yet figured out what the specific computation is for contraband, which is like the. Uh, by by playing the game right right yeah because typically um, you can kind of quantify it as like right. you know headshots are worth this yeah. or like one game is worth this or but, something like uh, that apparently it's not tied to how you perform in the game so it may be random it might be like some criteria we don't even know but uh, apparently as it's tuned now it is extraordinarily slow so you have to put in uh, about two in-game hours to receive one single item, which could be like stickers, emotes, sprays, fa face paints, or outfits, and you can't equip or view without owning the full set of a particular type of thing. So uh, you can't wow. mix you can't mix outfits and face paints with others, and you can't trade them between players or anything. Okay, and I get it. There's going to be some people that are like, who the fuck cares? Yeah. I just play the game. Hey, that's cool. Go ahead. Yeah. Play the fucking game. And, Somebody uh, like me that likes to customize stuff. Right. And obviously, they know people like customized stuff because they've created all this content for the game. That is is just fucking maddening. I've spent 5 and $10 on, like, costume pieces and clothing pieces for Saints Row. Oh, hey, Maltesers, yes. We will hey, be Maltesers. there on Friday. Oh, we sure will. That's yes, like, uh, we, never ninth, right? a, yeah, we never a uh, miss a Twitch event, so, yeah, well, we'll definitely be there. I sometimes do when I don't realize it's the right day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, take your old man pills and you'll figure it out. So <laughs> I, I was firmly convinced it was going to be, like, whatever day. It was, like, the Saturday. Yeah, yeah. And it turned out to be the Friday night. And I'm like, wow, uh, sure, <laughs> sure jazz for this thing. And then... Don't, Twitter feed comes up yep. with the picture. I'm like, motherfucker. Don't you feel like a horse's ass. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you're going to be there? Yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to see you there. We're going to have drinks. It's going to be awesome. Yep. 
and I slept through it basically. Oh well, you're gonna be there Friday. Yeah, I'm gonna be there Friday, and it's yes. gonna be fucking awesome. Can't yes. wait to see all your lovely faces. Yes, as will Jay Chinooki. Oh yes, as will Jay Chinooki. She will be there too. All right. Uh, so Fortnite's weird. <laughs> weird? Weird. Is that really the lead-in that we're going with? It is absolutely the lead-in we're going with. Because like, is it weirder than usual now? Because I just saw the Halloween costumes yeah, and all that so, madness. So, so right there was the comet. Yeah. Right. And it became, uh, was it uh, Loot Lake? Yeah. It smashed. And the so, water filled in. Yeah. It was a new area. Then there was the rift. Then there was the lightning. Mm-hmm. And it created the cube. Players call him Kevin. <laughs> uh, then the cube started like rolling, like cube-like, womp, 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 yeah. over the map, destroying shit in its path. And it left runes in its wake, like that that weird freaky monster in that Annihilation book. <laughs> it, it destroyed Tilted Towers, which, you know, everyone thought the comet was going to hit. Yeah. Nope, Kevin. <laughs> and it drove itself into a lake. Then it made the lake bouncy and glow purple. And it took the goddamn Macross Island into the sky, <laughs> and it floated around, fucking things up. You almost, you almost sound intrigued by this at this point. I am, because it's like, there is no logic or connective it's, tissue between see, these things. Now, here, here's what I, I think is going on. Hmm. I think that they are absolutely playing to their fan base of your average, like, 12 to 16 year old Who need, like, keys kid jangled? Basically that, but yeah. I think what they're doing is... Costume suggestions, weapon suggestions, mm. story suggestions. I think that's all fan fiction from the fans. Uh, and, and then, then they're possibly... just picking and choosing stuff that's like, hey, that's just weird enough that it'll work. Right. So the, the the island like floated around for a while and it came back to Luke Lake and then it broke the island. Now, as of yesterday, like yesterday afternoon, yeah. started to pulse and spin faster and faster and faster, shooting beams of light out. And then it just fucking exploded and it transported everyone in the map to the goddamn Q dimension where they floated around and it was weird. Did they have a disco laser party there? <laughs> Basically. And oh, then, hey, no beard. Welcome to the chat. We're just talking more, more Fortnite bullshit. Right. And it's like, like, I mean, <sighs> honestly, it's, it is interesting. Just, just, I just want to shoot some guys. It's interesting just on the simple fact that they've really like, not only have they made this, this, scientifically formulate game to extract the most money out of their audience. They do. Uh, with the most kind of simple idea. But clearly they're having fun with it at the same time, and you can't really blame them for that. It's true. Because a, a lot of time when you, you look at COD Bluffs, you look at Battlefield, you look at, like, uh, uh, PUBG, like, all these things, they rarely have this type of thing that really keeps you playing outside of, I'm really good at this, so I'm going to keep killing, yep. or, oh, hey, the newest DLC dropped, so I'm going to play these new maps or get this new gun or something like that. With Fork Knife, what they're doing is, even whether you agree with the game or not, it's interesting what they're doing with it, and that's how they're going to, you know, basically keep their audience with them. Sorry, I just had to quickly tweet out justice for oh, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. Ah, <laughs> uh, Kevin. <clears throat> So yeah, apparently there's some weird fucking rainbow Stonehenge thing now in yeah. the middle of Loot Lake. And basically, as long as they keep doing that, outside of like the core aspect of the game of like shooting in Minecraft aspects, sure. if you keep that map fresh and you keep that story going and you make it kind of different every fucking time, people are going to keep fucking playing oh, yeah. it. <laughs> like Alien Invasion next, go nuts. Yeah, like, like they're, who knows what's going to happen next, but it's it, good on them. I mean, honestly, it, yep. for as much shit as we get Fork Knife, they're they're smart about what they're doing. Rumor has it they're making some money. Yeah, I think it was what five hundred million in April. I, like <laughs> five hundred million dollars. It was ridiculous. In, I mean, I don't. I haven't even looked at million. it. It was. It's, it's been something like like a, a billion dollars for the year. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I stopped looking because it frankly made me sad a yeah. little. Oh so, yeah. And, uh, hi, uh, thank uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to the chat. Yeah, he says it's the the end. Uh, the developer said the recent event was the end of the beginning. So oh. I guess that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. I call it the inside of the middle. So they're I so I think what they're doing is they're basically saying we're just getting the shit started. Yeah. Freemium is where the money is made because if it's I free, mean, why wouldn't you? It honestly is, especially yeah. when your target audience is that like kind of that. 10 year old to 16 year old range of, of teenagers discount it's so easy to get because they have a computer they have a switch they have a ps4 they have an xbox okay they can literally just jump in download it and okay. fucking start playing it holla good to see you here i uh, haven't seen you in a while but uh if you can tell me that story and what that story is 
I will pay you a dollar. Because that's not a, that's a story, but it's not a story. And oh, thank you very much for the follow. Oh, I didn't see it. The, sa- the sound didn't pop up again. Sound didn't, so I yeah, turn the thing it was up. there though. <laughs> I'll, I'll turn it up. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> no hashtag justice for Karen. Karen's dead. Fucking deal with it. You know She's what? gone. Sad Karen can go. <laughs> you know, I'm just glad she didn't like come back and murder me. Fuck I mean, it. that would have been really funny. It would be hilarious. If there was like a like a revenge aspect to that, where like the zombies that take place in that sure. game, if you get murdered by the one that like you let go, kind of thing, that would be amazing. Get I, a trophy for that. <laughs> I do not want to see call like a, a co op. Uh, state of decay with zombie capabilities because <laughs> that would just end poorly for everyone. I enjoyed that game. Oh, there we go. Hollow's been a lurker for a while. Well, oh, thank you course. very much for joining in now. Yeah. That's, you know, the more the merrier with the chat because that's why we do yeah. this live. This is why we use Twitch instead of YouTube is because we like the live interaction. When we're talking about the yep. news and we're talking about games and everything like that, Hola, we want everyone to, yeah. to chime in. Hola is one of Malteser's regulars. And actually, I should actually get our, our streamstress to throw out a bunch of shout-outs because, of course, we have Commander Santa, our, our own uh, uh, digital fiasco uh, slash cooking alumnus. Mm-hmm. We have No Beard in the chat. Uh, he's also great. Malteser's does a shitload of uh, uh, Mega Man Maker oh, and, yes. and Mario Maker. My boy Mega Man. Yeah, like <laughs> crazy, crazy <laughs> reflexes on this guy. Uh, it, it's sometimes fun to watch him fail over and over again. But, I mean, that's what you get with Mario Maker. <laughs> but I, I saw him do stuff that would have driven me absolutely insane in Mario Maker. So I mean, it's go yes, yeah. you, you're you're you know you're right. We could do it live on YouTube, yeah. but no, everybody knows that that's yeah. uh, that's not the way to go. <laughs> so uh, shout out to all you guys. Uh, yes, go follow those guys. Check them out on Twitch. All of them are fantastic. Yes, absolutely. So, especially No Beard because he ate whatever the hell was in that can. <laughs> Like <laughs> I don't even remember what he beef ate. Beef soup or something was fucking <laughs> oh, disgusting. Oh, no, wait, was that the poutine gravy or was I that something know. else? It was vile, though. It was uh, fucking vile. It yeah. wasn't like baby food vile, but it was pretty vile. <laughs> oh, oh there's, always, there's always next to a lower stream. Terrible. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Confucius says, everything has its beauty, but not everyone sees it. And that's confusing until you hear the news story. Okay. Ubisoft is bringing Rainbow Six to china okay oh china, I, I guess that kind of makes sense because they you know they've had a console yeah. ban for like the longest time china is a huge untapped market for a lot of developers because of their um their censorship basically yeah. so they have very strict regulations of what can and cannot be in their games which is why their internet is basically just you know an iron curtain uh, yeah exactly uh so everyone knows about how china is with internet problem is that ubisoft is taking an interesting choice we'll say oh complex chris yes welcome to the chat we are from canada hey complex chris we're, we're right, uh, we right sure in manitoba are. right in the center of canada so, yes yeah. although we sing songs about west virginia we oh are there you go from chris, manitoba. chris is apparently from winnipeg oh, so yes <laughs> maybe he's one of our, our twitch people oh there we know. go so That's if you're gonna be at the twitch meet up hey we can uh we Come can meet, see up, us. meet up there on friday yep but in any case, so uh, Ubisoft, unlike, you see, Wolfenstein, right? You go in Germany, uh, and I mean, up until recently, you couldn't have swastikas. Yes. You couldn't have Nazi imagery or iconography. Right. Because, you know, they it's banned. So they make a completely separate game, or they patch it differently for that region. Right. They just replace logos right. and, like, little bits and pieces. So Ubisoft is kind of taking a different approach, where okay. they're taking... Uh, images of death and violence and gambling mm-hmm. and sex okay and they're taking it out of the game for everybody oh well that's unfortunate so there, there's like there's a scene where you're in a bar there's a bunch of like slot machines they're yeah. taking those out there's like a strip club neon sign on the wall oh, oh, complex, oh. thank you very much thank for you, that complex oh. chris <clears throat> why are we not getting this because it's not turned up i guess you yeah, thought he didn't turn them on i don't know I will check it out Because these sounds later. work, right? Yes, <laughs> they certainly do. Yep, there you go. Heard that one. Anyways, uh, anyway. yes, thank you very much for that follow. Thank you, Complex Chris. So, Unfortunately, I have only negative sounds so on the soundboard. Yeah, we still need to update with some positive sounds. Yeah. Well, hang on, there's this one. There's the... Oh, no, that one, and reading then the, Rainbow, the more man. you know. Yeah, the more you know. That's a positive sound. <laughs> uh, uh, reading Rainbow will be good for now. We'll do that. Okay, so anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a, a uh, neon sign of a woman like grinding on a pole. Okay. And that has been replaced, and I shit you not, with like a woman's finger doing this. And that is the image. Okay. Except in neon. It's, okay. It's just... 
It's just kind of there. <laughs> On the wall, kind of. It's like okay. it's vaguely in the same position. Okay, so we've seen this type of kind of censorship before where they'll remove posters, uh, you know, different, uh, like, things from games. So yeah, like that. But, but why are they removing it for everyone? I don't know. Like, you remember, uh, like, uh, the Stick of Truth for Australia. They, they took out the sex scene and they replaced it with, like, uh, like a black screen that said, you know, our censors force to take us out. Yeah, thing. yeah. You know, that sometimes happens in one territory. I've never heard of them, like, patching out existing content for everybody so the, that it would fit a specific country. The only thing that I can think of is that if they're playing it online with everyone else, maybe they did it so that there's less stress of having uh, two variations of the game playing I, together. I cannot imagine that would cause a problem, honestly. I know that in my mind, that's the only thing I can honestly think of. Because outside of that, it's it, it just sounds so fucking weird that you it would censor weird. an entire game across the entire world because of one region. I mean, unless it's it, no, the only thing I came up with, I thought about this for a while. The yeah. only thing I could come up with is because uh Rainbow Six, they're trying to make it a big tournament gameplay. Mm, okay. So like if you're doing like global international tournaments, you all have to be on the same version of the game. Yes. Um, maybe but that seems really like a, a... It might be the type of thing a where... A draconian way to get that, you know? Actually, you know what it probably is? Is that if they are heading to that esports arena where they right. want Siege to be, like, the biggest thing since, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like, Overwatch and uh, fucking... What should we call it? Uh, mm. uh, the other one. The shooter SWAT team game. Uh, fuck, I can't remember what it's called now. Dusty Depot, that's what it was. What? What's the, what's the other... Uh, SWAT shooter on uh, on Steam that's been there forever. SWAT shooter on Steam? Uh, whatever. Terrorist Ghost, versus... Ghost, Ghost Rico? No, Terrorists Win. The, oh, you like, mean Counter-Strike? Uh, yeah, Counter-Strike. So oh. basically with that is that... It's weird that that didn't immediately yeah. pop into my head. Yeah, so yeah. With, with that type of game, outside of the violence of the game, yeah. there's no real questionable stuff in there. So Siege... Is probably trying to do the same thing to make it viable for esports, so that there isn't I don't know. questionable like sexual content or gambling or anything like that. So outside of the violence right. of shooting another man, yeah. <laughs> uh, there there's no other questionable content in it, so well, that they can get into that esports arena easier. There's uh, the death icon is being changed from a skull to like a, a man's silhouette with an X through him. Of course, it, it, it's, <laughs> no, but it, it's not about violence. Apparently, images that promote superstition are completely verboten in china um ghosts Go i guess ghosts is a big thing that you cannot have ghosts in china <laughs> oh fuck that... i'm moving to china so i never play another <laughs> fatal frame again <laughs> jesus christ yeah you could just not play it either. fuck that series <laughs> holy shit but yeah that's actually one of the things i learned from from hollywood is that really? anything that has ghost imagery right. is you can't you can't have it in china i've seen some like so various... suffice to say they didn't get ghostbusters yeah, no, i don't know <laughs> I've seen some Japanese ghost movies. If they're anything like the Chinese ghosts, they don't want to fucking, you know, tempt fate. China completely leans away from ghosts. Yeah. Japan leans completely into the whole ghost thing. So like, cause, they get cause their they, whole head in the strike they zone. They get some scary ass shit there. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so maybe it's tournament play. I don't know what the hell, but it's the only thing I could think of. Yeah, that's. it's just really interesting that they changed it across the board. Yeah, that, see, everybody loves Fatal Frame. It is scary as hell. I, it's partially scary because of the ghosts that are in it. The other factor is that, unlike a Resident Evil game, you're fighting ghosts with a camera, which is not the best fucking weapon. <laughs> hey, it works, man. Where Eventually. Your... Okay, you just copied and pasted that. Your What's checks that? in the mail. Holla, he like, got the, yeah. the storyline. Yeah. Reddit, <laughs> Reddit put some kind of bullshit together. It's not official. This is scammed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you your dollar. I'm just going to like mm -hmm. convert it into like yen first. <laughs> put, it, put it all like in pennies coins. and mail it to him. <laughs> gonna find out like the Polish Zloty. I'm going to convert everything <laughs> over at the current spot What's that, like, rate. like Russian rubles or it's rubles something, or something? You know, and it's like it's yeah, gonna, Prussian francs. <laughs> it's going to cost more than the actual value of the money to send it to him, just from the weight of it. And I'm going to put it in a sock and I'm going to hit him with it. Okay. Oh yeah, the Polish Zloty. Holy shit! You would <laughs> the equivalent of that. You have to send him like millions, basically. Yeah, because that, that was the whole thing uh, for um, what's his face, uh, um, the 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 uh, the Witcher guy. Um, God, I can't what? think of his name right now. Uh, Gareth? Or no. Uh, um, oh. Or Geralt, sorry. No, no, the, the, the writer. Um, 
Oh, like the original guy yes, that was we were just once talking $16 about million. Dollars. Andre, Andre Sapkowski. I think it was, what, was that right? Yes. Yes, I think so. That's right. It'll have to be right because I don't remember. Because <laughs> he was like asking for like 800 million Polish Lottie, which was which like was 16, 16 million, million dollars yeah. or something like that. Yeah, I don't even know. Sapkowski, yeah. Thank you, Hollow. So I was right. I got there eventually, but <laughs> I mean, the fact that that was even in there, I'm actually surprised it came out. Yeah, so, good job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I just like the fact that uh, uh, Dmitry Glukowski like, called him out, like, fuck you, <laughs> Metro, man. I, gotta, I can't wait for that game. Man. I know you can't. Oh, so good. I am cautiously optimistic for that game. <laughs> Me and Power Picks were talking about it before. We're all like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, so Destiny 2. Oh, this While again. Well, we're talking about <laughs> Destiny 2, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have done my time in the Destiny barrel. Did you? Not like Commander Santa I levels. Was, I was going to say, I don't think anyone's up no. to his level, though. So. No, like Commander Santa did like Skyrim amount of time yeah. in fucking Destiny. It's crazy. Uh, but Destiny 2, um, they have just made a tweak that I find both awesome and infuriating oh great because okay. they could have done this in the first game so uh one of the types of the game uh, the items you can get is an exotic which is like uh like not unique per se but it's like it's just a high-end item. right that you don't get variations of it like you do the the yeah. reds the purple the reds the, the purples <laughs> the blues whatever it, it's just like it, it is the, those stats that type of uh element etc etc usually um so exotics they were very important from the first game the 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 second game, and, and actually, like, the first game to the DLC, like, they rebalanced a bunch of them, and it was like you could rebuy them, and oh, okay. there's a bunch of shit. In case you, like, missed out on them or whatever. Bottom line is exotics are awesome. Um, so now they're making a change in the newest patch for Destiny 2, where when you receive an exotic, it's going to take into account all the other exotics you've ever gotten, mm -hmm. and it will weight them against exotics you've never gotten, so you're more likely to get something you've never gotten before. And they just made this now? <laughs> right? Right? Like two years into Destiny 2? Oh my god. So, and, and when you receive a duplicate, you're more likely to get a piece of armor because, like, the stats are all a lot more variable. Right, right. So, it, it's like, okay, so I'm confused. This is Destiny 2. This is the biggest fucking grind game out there. Why are you trying to make this easy on me? Well, I mean, I think they realized that they were hemorrhaging players, so they had to do something to keep them going because a lot of these players yep. were going in, banging their head against the wall, trying to get these exotics, whether it be armor or weapons or whatever, and just missing missing it every single time, whether yeah. they're getting a duplicate or just getting some oh, other man. bullshit that they didn't want. So I think they had to do this to get people back into the game yep. so that they could keep collecting shit that they couldn't get before that was super rare that they See, had such trouble with. Tron can back me up on this. I had something like four supercells at one point in the first game, and there was... You remember we, we used to talk about Jake? Yeah. The guy that, you know, yes. no one liked? Um, he never got one, so I, I, like, recorded a video of me, like, destroying them <laughs> one after another <laughs> and after another, and I sent it to him. <laughs> And it was like, you know, I I, I could have saved one, but I knew, like, yeah. and I did. I got another Supercell later. It's like, it was just fun. Oh, JT, don't worry. We're getting to BlizzCon. Oh, BlizzCon. That's... It's it's in there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is the, in there because there will be much, much to be said of that. The, the image on the graphic is, you know, Diablo for a reason. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's the bullshit games as service nonsense. It's just, you know. It's just, but I mean, it's. It's so transparent at this it point is. that they're doing that shit because they're like, hey, come on back. There's a better chance you'll get the weapons you're looking for now. Well, really? Disney's is always it like, been like that. You should have fucking done that in the first place. You get the DLC, they automatically bump you up to like level 45 or whatever the fuck it is now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sony has patented a way of sorting your games by what your friends are playing and what they have. So you can sort your games and see instantly, hey, this guy's been playing this game and uh, I also have this game. So let me reach out to this guy and play it together. Didn't they have something like that before? Well, it would tell you if they were playing it. Yeah. You know, say friends that are playing this game, right? Mm -hmm. But it doesn't like go through your list and go through their list and say, hey, you know, you know how you've been playing this game? It's almost like pre-matchmaking or right. something like that. It's kind of like unless you happen to look at the exact time your friend was playing. Yeah. You know, you never know. Okay. But, I mean, it's good. It's interesting. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> but they're definitely more like the PS4 has always been about 
uh, more matchmaking, more uh, like social aspect. Yeah, built right into the hardware. That's that's always been one of the funny parts because I um I mean you do your fair share of online gaming. You have your crew that you work with though. Like you have I, my crew that I tolerate. Yeah, I mean yeah, you tolerate them. Whatever you you make fun of each other, but you you have that crew that you play online. I don't do a lot of online yeah. gaming anymore, and these are the things that always just kind of fly over my head because. Sure. When they talk at press conferences about all these online abilities and the you know yeah. friending people and being able to join all these games and matchmaking and stuff like that, that shit flies so far over my head because yeah. I don't give two shits about it. Well, uh, see, because literally my friend list, there's like four people on it, <laughs> <laughs> so that stuff just doesn't affect me whatsoever. Yeah. But I could see that if people use their PlayStation as a social media platform, kind of like a Facebook or something like that. Um, I could see that really working in their favor because mm. they might be hammering away on this game. They're like, oh shit, I need someone to help me on this. Or, man, I really like this game, but I want to play more multiplayer, but I want sure. to play with someone I, I might know or at least have talked to. Yeah. All of a sudden, bing, you have a list of people on there hey. saying, oh yeah, they play this too. Right, exactly. It's so you can find people that, you know, you won't have to carry them through the FBI building. <laughs> In payday, too. And just so you in the chat, I'm not a recluse or anything like that. I'm not, like, I'm not a little hermit in the corner playing by myself. It's like, I just really enjoy single-player games, so. I also enjoy single-player games, but mostly I prefer, like, if I'm playing online with people, I want it to either be uh, a closed server so I can play competitively against people I know. Yeah. Or I want it to be, like, a co-op game. Absolutely. You know, I, I just... I don't like random assholes on the internet. I like <laughs> a very select curated group of assholes that are a known quantity. Curated group of assholes. That's pretty much my friends in a nutshell. There's your new band name. Yep. <laughs> curated group of assholes. <laughs> That's more of a production company, I think. All right. Uh, EA has finally revealed the name of its new streaming game service. It's going to be called Project Atlas. They first revealed it during E3 this year. They only just announced it, I believe, last Friday, I want to say. Okay. Uh, CTO Ken Moss is saying they currently have more than 1,000 employees working on it daily, as well as dozens of studios around the world contributing their innovations, driving priorities, and already using dozens of the components. So what's weird is that they are basically building games that are specifically designed for streaming, not it's not going to be something you will get, you know, streamed or on a physical game. Yeah. They're talking about building from the ground up these streamed games. So is, is this kind of like the the idea of like that, uh, was it the Darwin Project? Where it had Twitch integration where the, the chat could actually fuck around with the game like while the people were playing it? Is that kind of the concept there? I don't know that one. Um, that's the one where the, the chat could, like, vote sure. on people getting, like, bonuses and negatives, oh, like, while they're playing like, the game uh, and like, stuff uh, like that. Like, what was the, the one with the trucks? The, uh, oh, oh uh, Cluster Truck. Cluster Truck. Yeah. Cluster Truck, and there's another one, like, you're in an arena, and people could spawn, like, various different things to kill. Uh, it was like Killing Floor, is Something it? Arena. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. It wasn't Killing Floor. But, yeah, that, that kind of thing. Right, like, right. so is that, is that the concept here? No, Like, they're no, building it's, games it's, from the ground up for that? It's, or? like, uh, it's gonna be, like, kind of the idea of, like, the Battletech, uh, 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 centers where it's like it's all run off a, a central mainframe and everyone will else have their, their thin clients running locally okay so it won't be like the equivalent it's like kind of a, a like your whole system is based on the cloud essentially so i'm sure they'll do both but some of their games are going to rely on the cloud so they're talking about uh, social features and communications friends and groups uh you know play create share yada 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 matchmaker etc 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 all the basic kind of social stuff you see to today's consoles but they're also talking about uh, machine learning powered scenarios so here's the thing that i thought was interesting okay so moss is touting features uh of this ai learning he says leveraging ai and machine learning will also give us game give game makers the ability to craft in-game interactions with non-player characters or npcs in a way that is virtually indecipherable from a human interaction I think he meant indistinguishable, but uh, <laughs> instead of a pre-scripted pattern-based logic for NPC behavior, it would make it possible for an NPC to engage in a way that is dynamic, contextual, and absolutely believable. So that's interesting. It's something you couldn't do locally because there's not enough power mm -hmm. in your home systems, but, I mean, we still have the issues with latency, right, in North America specifically. But, you know, now you have, like... Uh, it's a gold rush. You have xCloud, you have Project Stream, like Google is one now. Right. Yep. Now you have Atlas. 
uh, I don't know. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be ridiculous. They're talking about oh, uh, Maltesers. Maltesers one. He's going yeah. to see Jack White. <laughs> nice. Well, he, congrats on the win, because yeah, I never win anything yeah. like that. <laughs> he's a great author. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> yeah, the whole Camelot and Arthur and different jack white no nope, stop <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway uh hollow says if ea can pull this off like nvidia did with geforce now then they'll be fine right yeah <clears throat> or like on live if that was successful right <laughs> so successful <laughs> but How i mean many years did they last <laughs> right so they're, they're putting together all these streaming services and meanwhile trump's trying to kill net neutrality which will allow them to throttle bandwidth on some of these fucking things i know it's just ugh, there's so many so why now <sighs> i i don't know Again, we've talked about this at length mm. with different companies trying to do the same thing. And again, in theory, in theory, it's an interesting concept. But ultimately, yeah, North America just doesn't have, we don't have the infrastructure for it right now. And especially with, you know, people trying to kill net, net neutrality and stuff like that. That's not going to fucking help anything because you throttle any little bit on that type of concept and it's done. It won't work. Right. I mean, on our shitty infrastructure as it is. Exactly. I can barely download porn while we're streaming this. <laughs> I told you to shut that off. We're losing frames. <laughs> we're not multisers. We don't drop frames. <laughs> He's going to hate me for that one. Anyway, some quick hits before we get to the big ticket. Okay. Uh, Sony released the first trailer for the Medieval remake for PS4. Oh, yes. So Daniel Fortescue looks great. I'm uh, I'm pretty excited yeah. for that one. Because I, I remember playing that way original. back in the day. Yeah. And seeing this like remaster trailer i was like you know that it, like i don't want to say it looks like a brand new game because obviously it mostly is but yeah you know, it's so night and day compared to the original right it's insane like uh, it, it looks so fucking good I, I just wish that they didn't release a game that perpetuated this skeleton on, on skeleton crime <laughs> it, it's, well it was it's heartbreaking sometime <laughs> it's heartbreaking it really is yep anyway uh, so that's due out sometime in 2019. Uh, the way Sean Layden was phrasing it, mm -hmm. he, he said he said months away. Yeah. So like looking for like a March release or something like I that. Mean, I, I mean, I mean, it, it looks pretty solid from from what the trailer was yeah. showing, and we they've already been working on it for a while now. So this isn't going to be like a fucking October release next year no, or something like that. No, I mean, you know. I'm just actually surprised they're going to miss, like, the, the anniversary and miss, like, Halloween and stuff, so... Well, yeah, it's a little late for that now. <laughs> anyway, uh, Just Cause 4 has just gone gold. Awesome. So, uh, and it's just in time to release details about their season pass and the DLC that's coming, so... Oh, stop! No! Right? The game's <laughs> not even it. out. They have their DLC plan. Yep. So we three packs... Uh, Daredevil's Demons in Danger, and it's all stuff about Rico doing stuff. <laughs> Takes racing and destruction in new heights as Rico battles the gangs of the soulless underground in heart-stopping death races and rampage rallies. Do they have a mech again in this one? Uh, I don't. Because that was pretty fucking cool. I mean, it was all right. It was okay. Yeah, and the, I again, it's just I don't I don't have a problem with DLC initially. It's just the game just went gold. Yep. And they're already like, hey, here's another sixty dollars worth of content that's on the disc, but we're gonna sell it to you separately. No, I'm sure you it's not. Fucks. I'm sure it's not on the disc yet. It's not like the the Street Fighter where the characters are there and you know. Like, yeah. Well, either way, you know what I mean. Like it's yeah. already built. It's already in the pipe. Like it's good to go. So it's. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit less jaded about straight up DLC these days because it's not like they're making the game and they have day one. 50 character like instant drops but that's the whole thing yeah gone gold and they're already talking about a three pack dlc well, yeah. it's not it's not like but that's six, like nine months of work but six months into the game yeah. and they're like hey just when you were getting tired of this game here's some dlc for well, you that's how you fucking no, do no, it because no. it brings the people back this day and age if there is not dlc announced right away people are going to forget about that game they're not going to come back six months from now and say, oh, remember this game? I have trouble going back to, like, Assassin's Creed Origins. I have, like, three DLC packs I've not actually done for Origins just because it was, like, months before the first one came out. So, yeah. I mean, I obviously, my backlog's a little bit bigger than some others, but if you don't announce it and get people ready for it, mm -hmm. you know? Spider-Man, uh, it's been out for, what, uh, two months? Mm, just over a month. It was yeah. in September. And its so, first yeah. DLC came out. Like, last month. The second DLC is going to be out, like, in a okay, couple of weeks. well, there you go. Either way, that was fair. Spider-Man came out. Yeah, see? They, I, they hinted at mm, there was going to be DLC. They didn't hint. They said yeah. straight up. They had a season pass. Day one, I bought it. 
You bought the the season pass I day got, one. Well, the way Spider Man was, you're goddamn right. I did. <laughs> day no, one. I just I don't remember there being a season pass oh, day yeah. one. See, I think I think it's just situational how like indignant you are about it is all. How, it's like directly proportional to how much you like the game. Uh, well, no, it isn't because I because I love Just Cause and okay. I love Spider Man. So. All right, <laughs> withdrawn. Yeah, damn right. Uh, late September, the uh, Pan-European Game Information Board, or PEGI, as we know it, yep. uh, has rated two classic games for the PS4, and you're going to like this. Okay. For the PS4 is coming Hitman Absolution okay. and Hitman Blood Money. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so any information on those? Like, what it's, kind of remaster we're getting? Or? I am assuming that's going to be a minimal remaster, similar to what we got in the PS3, higher res. In the, in the upscale, basically. Yeah, yeah. basically. I mean, the, uh, I... That's probably why we're not getting, uh, what was it, Hitman Contract, which was the sort of Hitman one, but not really. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember if it was that one. What was the first one? It wasn't the first one, because the first one never was on the, the remastered disc. It I, was. I think it was Contract, because that's the one you like, yeah. never hear about. Because <laughs> you, you only had, like, it was uh, key missions from the first game and, like, some other stuff that was remastered. It was weird. But anyway... But it was, like, rough mm-hmm. on the PS3. Anyway, uh, also rated by the ESRB earlier this week, Sunset Overdrive for PC. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so that's formerly an Xbox One exclusive, also done by Insomniac. It's now, uh, they actually have a listing on Steam Database. So on the Steam DB, you can actually go out and look at it. It's got a, a number and everything. So this is really happening. Maybe I can actually try that game and figure out what the fuck it is. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's like a like a grinding. It's like... It was like a... Like a th- like a wacky third person shooter with yeah. rail grinding Picture, it'd be like if tony hawk pro skater had guns <laughs> i mean my best uh sort of description would be a comparison like if you cross dead rising with jet moto okay. not jet moto pardon me uh jet grind radio okay yeah jet moto that would be a different different game well, that'd be road rash with hover bikes that would be <laughs> yeah all right. Uh, do, 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 do. Make a bit goal. Yeah, Jet Set Radio. Yeah. Rick, rip off of Infamous? No, not really. It's more of a... Infamous was like a like a dark and gritty superhero game. Yeah. It was yeah. like a straight up third person... Yeah. Jet Set Radio is a right. much closer... App yes. Descri- Jet, Set Ra- Jet Set Radio with guns. Yes. <laughs> Basically. And, and really soft wanted, drinks. I really wanted a remaster of that one. We got we got like an upscale remaster, yeah. of it, but the controls were horrendous because they were the original Dreamcast oh, yes. controllers. Yes, and it was just it was terrible. It was almost unplayable because I love the music, yep. I love the style of the story, but there's just like after the third or fourth level, it gets so hard that yep. I'm like these controllers. I just want to th- break my controller in half. Jet Set Radio needs a, a soft reboot, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like like uh, Ratchet and Clank had. Mm-hmm. Uh, PUBG is coming to PS4 sooner than later. I figured as much. Yeah, but sooner than later, because uh, if you check out the article on PSU.com, there's already uh, a thread on PSN Profiles that says it's in the database. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they have images and content ID strings for the PSN store. It's coming, like, very soon. Which yeah, is see, weird, because we that was nothing. That was one of those things that was always up in the air, like last year when we were talking about it. Maybe it was even earlier this year because yeah. it was that Xbox had it on lock kind of thing. Like they, another, obviously, they obviously paid a bunch of money to get ago. it on there first and everything. Right. And um, yeah, and I think it was just it was a uh, it was that same concept of uh, they they just bet on the wrong horse this time. And they I think they just said you know what fuck it we're bringing it on PS4 yeah. now we need we need the extra income the extra players. Mamekill says, but will there be PUBG Mobile? I mean, as mobile um, as your PS4 is, PUBG has mobile. It's already out. I literally had it on my phone <laughs> like six months ago. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Surprisingly, oh, there's the PSU article. Thank mm. you, Jay Tanuki. There's some people that said it was better than the Xbox version because the Xbox version was completely broken when it came out. <laughs> they had some kind of crazy bugs on it that just made it not work. Whereas I played PUBG Mobile and surprisingly, if you had a controller for it, right, it plays like a fully fledged PUBG game. I was quite shocked by that. Yeah, assuming you're a console peasant and not one of the PC master race, I'm just getting in there before Man Kill does his <laughs> fucking rant. Anyway. Mobile. So, <laughs> anyway, ZeniMax Online Studios game director Matt Furor, uh, obviously ZeniMax owns Bethesda Softworks. Right. Uh, he says we're not going to see the next Elder Scrolls game until the next generation of consoles. I'm not surprised in the slightest. Not really, because Elder Scrolls was already like a few years out at least. Bethesda has like so much shit in the works, and yeah, they have like um, what was that other? We're, that, that other Elder Scrolls related thing. We're gonna see. Uh, 
we're we're definitely going to see Space Rim before we see the next Space Skyrim. <laughs> uh, what was it called? It was uh, um... Star Star escape or something i can't remember the fuck it was it was star something i think star not starbound that was the other game um starline or is it i don't know whatever I, I, I space mean, rim i call it space rim because it is if it's skyrim in space it is going to be skyrim in space it's sold. skyrim sci-fi sold <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. i'm more excited for that just because i'm a sci-fi guy i'm excited for that like cyberpunk 20 uh, 2070 is gonna be a yep i hope that comes out next year too starbound starbound yeah. no that's starbound, starbound wait is, no is the terraria one Star that's the terraria field. one starfield, starfield. Yes, thank, you. thank you had to had to whittle it down there <laughs> to be fair though starbound they've been talking about that one coming to ps4 forever and it really needs to because starbound is excellent it's like a lot very similar it's to just, terraria it's space terraria isn't it? it it's like terraria if you had multiple planets in a spaceship right and like quests and like guns <laughs> aliens and, and yes hollow 2077 does look incredible i'm that's it like that's that's my game that's my game of my entire life right there it's yeah. i cannot fucking wait to play that when game. that game comes out you can probably we're gonna get a stand in for those couple mm -hmm. of weeks we're just gonna... anyone that's been watching the show for you know at least the past like six months when we were talking about those games yep. basically cyberpunk 2077 and uh ghost of tsushima as Go soon as those come out like i'm done i'm yep. like head down in my computer or my ps4 fucking playing them <laughs> you know, that are just do the whole subject. i mean yes <laughs> dudes dudes fucking talented but uh you know they have they have their pick of the litter when it comes to guys that could do the soundtrack for that well teaser says hire me guys i'm great he's gonna show me up and can't have anyone on the show better at games than i am sorry yeah. We, uh, you know what we should we should have them on the show one of these times well, one of the 12-hour like, streams to bring them down 12-hour stream yeah. or maybe even on why would you play that oh that'd be good yeah get him in there for a game of crawl or overcooked or something <laughs> where he can lose his fucking mind with yeah. us that'd be awesome <laughs> malt and chris in the morning there you go <laughs> we even have a sound effects board for you <laughs> you can do the morning traffic <laughs> anyway <laughs> so oh yes jane is bringing up with the 18-hour christmas stream gun stream there we go <laughs> Jackbox, why would you play that? Actually, we do have uh, a Jackbox we do 5. Have, we do have Jackbox 5. Courtesy so. of uh, Jackbox Games. We So, Jackbox TV, you know, come out and we'll play some Jackbox 5 one of these Wednesdays eventually. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Because doing stuff is fun. Who <laughs> out there is looking to buy a PS4 and has not yet done so already? I know Kelly has. Mame kill. Mame kill. Yes. Well, this is the perfect moment to do it because Walmart and Target have both leaked for black friday there we go i told name kill i'm like stay tuned this week it'll Come be black on. friday we already knew there was going to be a a a price drop yeah we already talked about the 50 dollars drop No, because he, but... he literally texted me two yes. days ago he's like hey do you have no. any leads on these sales and i was like wait till this week oh, there yeah. will be leaks so in the u.s i don't know what the comparable canadian price will be but you can probably do the math yeah there is going to be a 199 dollar ps4 slim bundle wow with spider-man jeez good so goal. a 200 dollars ps4 slim with spider-man oh so meme kills looking for a pro though i'm which will probably still have some kind of price dip on it too because black it, friday it, they're probably both going to come down the same amount but pro i mean I, I i like the pro i don't think you know if your choice is between if you if you don't have one sure get a pro if you have a ps4 he has a ps4 so right. he wants to upgrade that said uh when no beard was here he's yep. like man this looks so much better on the pro i'm like oh. yeah what can i say you know <laughs> it, it's been a long time since i've seen a game not on the pro um the i think the last time i don't know i think it was horizon and i mean it makes a pretty big difference on horizon so mm -hmm. yeah it, yeah there's certain games where you're yeah. not going to notice as much and there's other games where they take full advantage of that extra horsepower i mean in my mind it, even if it was just it like reduces dips in frame rate I think it'd be worth it for me. Yeah. But I mean, if you you have a PS4, why go and rebuy a Pro? But mm -hmm. if you don't have one, you can do that. Anyway, so there's probably going to be a price drop around Christmas for the Pro as well as the, the regular PS4. Um, so while we're talking about the PS4, it is now official. Sales of the PS4 have exceeded the lifetime totals of the PS3. So according to Sony's last quarterly report, the PlayStation of the ps3 which ended at 83.8 million uh the playstation 4 has now sold a ground total of 86.1 million units wow so that's that's crazy yeah it really is you know 
So now their next goal is the PS1 had 102.49 million. Um, they can do that probably. Like that's basically. I mean, they're they're on track 14 to, million. They're on track to do it, right? And PS2 sold. <laughs> and we have a couple people in the chat already that are ready right. to buy one. So <laughs> exactly. And the PS2 sold 155 million. I mean, the PS2 sold like fucking gangbusters forever. Mm-hmm. So if you think about it, probably the PS5 is going to be 2020. They'll probably announce it early 2020. So they have a year and two, three months of sales. Yeah. Without any sort of uh, like reason not to buy a PS4. People are still going to buy PS4s going into the PS5 <laughs> era, but... <laughs> yep, sorry, f Maltesers. <laughs> <laughs> Went to the midnight release for the Xbox yep. One. Press F to pay respects. <laughs> Yikes. Give us news about Kingdom Hearts 3 PS4 Pro, guys. Well, it's going to come out. It's going to be out in uh, February? January? February? Uh, January, I, give a shit. I believe. I don't care. I don't know. We'll ask Jay Tanuki about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Literally, I do not give a fuck. <laughs> Actually, I went looking now. Now that they have like the the story so far, I mm-hmm. went looking for like the all in one pack. Yeah, yeah. Shockingly, Amazon didn't have any of that either. Really? Because there's no like Super Turbo edition of that or whatever. No, so... I mean I think it's out now. It's like out. I think last week it came out. I think. Yeah. There you go. January 29th. So I'd imagine the pro yeah. comes out at the same time. Or right around the same time. Only available in the U.S. Oh, well, bastards. We'll, we'll Should still be on Amazon, though. I'm sure I can get it off eBay ridiculously. Yeah. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll talk to Steve, have him ship it up, because I'm not giving Tron my mailing address. <laughs> Screw that. I end up with, like, 14 tons of anal leakage-inducing gummy bears. <laughs> He's going to send some cheap video games with it, at least? Probably. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> see, the key to that is, is you don't have to eat the gummy bears. <laughs> don't i though <laughs> i don't think you do it's gonna be all mixed in with real ones i'll never know it'll be like russian <laughs> roulette <laughs> oh yes a bag of dicks <laughs> that's also good all right so uh blizzcon yes all right here we go there. everyone's waiting for it Woo! hey so we had some tickets we had some good announcements though i mean warcraft 3 reforged yep that's awesome i mean that that one was uh, a lot of the fans were asking for yeah it. um well, same thing with and, starcraft right you just want that resized and like up res for yeah the modern just system modernize it so we can play it <laughs> right because warcraft 3 like I, I played a lot of that back in the mm-hmm. day. Yeah. I really liked Warcraft. I still 3. played more of Warcraft 2, but that was because yeah. I was just getting into RTS. Hey, at Chloe the time. Sky, how you doing? Oh, hey, Chloe. Welcome to the chat. <laughs> and yeah, you're just in time to talk about BlizzCon yep. and uh, the pros and cons and highs and lows. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if you're talking about a specific thing, but there was one low that was kind of low for a low. I mean, what, what are you talking about? Whatever would have happened at BlizzCon. All right. <laughs> Who wants to say it? <laughs> So, um, yeah, mobile. It was... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but you know, spoilers. <laughs> oh, so, I mean, this is the year where mobile games came out and everyone expected to have a much better response than they actually had. Like, Command & Conquer Rivals. Like, yep. y- you remember E3 stream? Like, oh, yeah. that moment? Oh, no. Like, and, and we all just... That was a resounding, oh! Yeah. Like, we all just got punched in the dick at the same time. Right. <laughs> But I mean, at least then we weren't expecting a brand new Command and Conquer game and got that instead. Yes, exactly. So are, are we just going to dive into the meat of it We're here? We're going to dive into the meat of it because, I mean, there wasn't really a lot, if you don't like World of Warcraft for BlizzCon, that we really can talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe kill. Stay a while and buy 500 crystals for 4 dollars uh, 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 <laughs> Or wait 12 hours. <laughs> so Diablo Immortal was announced. Yes. And it was not the announcement that most people were looking for. I don't think anyone was expecting this. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, we, we heard that there were a couple of Diablo projects in the works. Right. I just don't think anyone thought that any of them were going to be a mobile Or if it nonsense. was, that it wasn't going to be their major announcement. Yeah, that was their big fucking showcase item during mm-hmm. blizzcon so uh i don't know if you saw it it is a very light version of diablo for ios and android it has a, a button on your face for attack yep you mash that button you mash that you move a d-pad around yep. to move around the screen and you have 
up to five skills, which are tinier buttons, and you drag them like in the direction you're going to attack with them. Yeah. Or you hold them down, you move them for a location. Not not anything that uh, you yeah. know new and groundbreaking. We've seen this so, many many times well, in lots of other games. You, you've seen it from games by Netties, which is the Chinese publisher that Activision Blizzard is pairing with. Yeah, to exactly. Make Diablo so, Immortal. All right. So obviously, okay, we, we're all here. We're all talking about BlizzCon. We've all read the news already of the disappointment, yeah. the April, the April Fool's joke, as it was called, and whatnot. Um, but what it comes down to is, uh, it's just a really unfortunate event for for both sides. So for one, for the fans. Because Blizzard was saying, hey, you know, we have some Diablo news. Yeah. It's not like crazy big, but we have some Diablo news. So they, they tried to quell that right before BlizzCon even happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but the major problem wa- with that was, unlike uh, we talked about uh, Command & Conquer. Right. Because we didn't see that coming. EA just came out of nowhere and said, hey, Command & Conquer, here's some some footage from it. It's a it's a, so it's a smartphone game and whatnot. So there was the resounding, oh, the groans, the boos, and everything like that. But yep. EA was never promising anything. EA never said, oh, you're going to get real excited. We're working on a Command & Conquer game for you guys. Right. Whereas Blizzard, the, you know, the owners yeah. and builders and devs of Diablo, <sighs> one of the biggest games of all time. Okay. They come out and they say, yes, we are working but, on, on Diablo stuff. But the problem is, is that they presented it in completely the wrong way. Blizzard is like the pinnacle. Like there, there is there is Valve, yep. there is Rockstar, and there is Blizzard as the you'll get it when you get it kind of company. Yes, exactly. You know, so if anyone was surprised that a Blizzard game is going to take a long time to make, mm-hmm. I don't know why they were surprised. Yeah. So, I mean, yes... They were expecting one thing, they got another, but really to have that kind of backlash, like that's stupid. Like it's the the uh, the trailer has four hundred and fifty five thousand dislikes mm-hmm. now. I mean, I'm not a mobile guy. I'm just I'm just not. Yeah. But this is where the market is, especially in China for like Netties, right? Okay. So that's they're making money. That's kind of what I was getting at. So again, they presented it in the wrong ways. What yes. they should have done is they should have taken any little scrap of D4 that they had to show, shown it, right, and given all the fans kind of like a glimpse of what they were looking for, and then said, in the meantime, we have this. So that would have been <laughs> like fair trade, basically, at that point. You don't lead up to something, yep. show this game, and then be like, hey, smartphone game, because that's what everyone fucking wants. They just presented it in the wrong way. If they had quelled that or like just right. brought brought the mood down a little bit or like had just given them a little something extra before dropping that on them i think it would have went a lot more smoothly so, and um, they also did terrible fucking pr after the fact because even though the audience was fairly ruthless in asking them and, and oh, questioning ridiculous. them and booing them and stuff like that um they handled it in a fucking terrible way, too. They had uh, players, uh, angry vocal players, said it was disrespectful to their fan base, uh, it's akin to killing the franchise completely. Uh, there is uh, apparently full revolt in the uh, in the official forum, the subreddits, and social media. Uh, and get this, though. This is the, the big insult to injury. Yeah. Kotaku is reporting that according to uh, two of their sources familiar with Blizzard's plans, they planned to announce Diablo 4 at BlizzCon, uh, but they pulled it uh, about two weeks ahead of time. Because apparently the announcement, they said it's going to come in the form of a teaser video, which Blizzard Entertainment co-founder Alan Adam told the crowd that Diablo 4 is in development, but not ready to show. So they were going to show it, and they pulled it at the last See, minute. See, and they, and they should have. This, yeah. this would have saved that whole conference for them. Uh, I mean, that's probably what they had to do, right? They had a hole. They had to stretch Diablo Immortal to fill it. Yeah, and it's, it's just really unfortunate, because again, they, they could have yeah. fixed it. And then, of course, the classic line of, don't you guys have phones? Yeah. That is akin... To the guys at Xbox saying, oh, we have a system for those people. It's called yeah. an Xbox 360. That is the biggest fucking slap in the face. Don Matrick was not the best for the... So, the yeah, spot. unfortunately, he chose the words, don't you guys have phones, instead of saying anything else. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just the thing. Okay, granted, there are a certain group of, we'll say, entitled game players who are upset and angry. The problem is, as we, 
you and I get older, we lose track that, you know, we are not the target audience for these kind of new developments. Well, and, and gamers in their teens and whatnot, yeah. the, the, the millennials, they're no longer the target market either. It's people with fucking smartphones. Yeah, no, and, and the problem is, is that, again, this is the kind of the, the other side of it is... <laughs> you don't like Clyde Menace says he has a phone he's using it right now to lug it to Steam <laughs> get download Path of Exile um, excellent yeah so on the other side of it obviously you can never you can't blame Activision Blizzard for building a Diablo game for smartphones because no. it is a basically a sure thing especially because they're working with a Chinese developer right where the Chinese phone market that is where it's at yeah well NetEase, people right people in China with smartphones that is like 90% of the gaming market right there. Well, a lot so of the Asian markets, it's really. It's fucking yeah. huge. So you cannot blame Activision Blizzard for making that game. Wait, wait. Are you saying that Activision and Blizzard like money? No. <laughs> But no, that that's basically what it comes down to. And again, it's, it's makers of that's World why I'm of like, Warcraft and Call of Duty like money. That's why I'm like on like I understand both yeah. sides of this. I understand it from a fan perspective, and I understand it from Blizzard's yes. perspective. Because yes. again, on the other side is. You know, the fans wanted to see something of Diablo 4. They wanted to see something that was right. bigger than a smartphone game. Um, and they just got the smartphone game. And the problem is, is that ultimately they, you know, Blizzard says, oh, we want to we want to deliver this, this, uh, you know, this amazing Diablo experience to you on your phone. Yep. That is just transparent bullshit. It is. They are doing it for money and it nothing else. <laughs> it is. And so, yeah, if, if, again, if it was more of but an experience, that's... if there was more meat on that Diablo game, yeah. but it's, it's a, it's a Chinese phone game, basically. It's not a bad thing, It's there thing, to though. make money. It's not a bad thing, though. It was just the timing of the announcement. Like, they pulled it because they weren't ready to commit to a date. Yeah. And, and Diablo Immortal was left to carry the water. And unfortunately, everyone lost their shit. Yeah. I just don't like it when gamers, like, are over-entitled and they revolt and, like, do stupid stuff. Like, they leave death threats and, you know... Well, I haven't all heard over about death threats about this no. one yet, but, but I, I like, hope it doesn't get to it, it was the same shit that uh, made Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, like, put a stain on that performance. Yeah. Even though, like, it, it uh, sold... The, the, like, it made the most revenue of any game that year. Everyone thinks Call of Duty Infinite Warfare warfare did terribly but it didn't it was good mm -hmm. i liked that game a lot yeah or at least the campaign the multiplayer apparently not so great yeah but and again anyway. it's it's coming from like typical typical people that go to blizzcon are blizzard fans of you know different like the various ages and stuff yeah. like that and it's been said before i believe it was on like reddit and, and yeah. some some forums and stuff like that that blizzard used to be the company that didn't release something until it was ready and right. if they didn't believe in it they canceled it like so, st like Starcraft Ghost. Like, if it well, just wasn't ready or they didn't believe in it, they fucking canceled well, it. Well, they're not going to cancel Diablo. They're just not ready to commit to a date yet. Well, no, but that, the whole thing is yeah. I'm not saying cancel Diablo. Yeah. I'm saying that they, you know, in the past, they never would have released a game like right. this because it's a it's a hacked, uh, like, hacked up version of Diablo. Right. It's a cheap experience of Diablo. Before it scrolls off the screen, I just yeah. want to say, Plaid Men, as he mentioned, what concerns me is how they're going to extract money because the EU is currently leaning heavily into banning loot boxes. And that's not to say they're going to have loot boxes. They'll probably just have other forms of microtransactions. They will have some circumvented way you just buy of, coins of yes there'll, there'll be something else that isn't loot boxes it'll be another well, way to as long know, as you get money out right of as long as you you can buy things you know what you're getting and it's not in any way a lottery type thing where yes. you, you you buy a pack and you get random shit that would be like the gambling aspect <laughs> diablo dollars <laughs> diablo dollars yes <laughs> jesus christ all right you know what time it is Oh, my. we have four minutes. <laughs> I think we can go five minutes over to talk about our hidden Or we can save gems. it for next week. <laughs> Do you know what time it is? No. Look at how many people we have in the chat. What? You're not going to disappoint them by not doing the options menu. What time is it, Mr. It's time Wolf? for the options menu. <laughs> Press select on the options menu. This yes. week. <laughs> this week. <laughs> this week. That's not what a select button sounds like. <laughs> well, we don't really have anything that sounds like a select button. Uh -huh. The closest thing we have... Yeah, that's... Family Feud. We need a select button. Okay. Doo -doo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This week, 
on the options menu, which is a rotating series of random topics we like to talk about. This week, we're going to talk about hidden gems, games that maybe people have missed that you want to go back to over the years. And I'm going to let you start. Um, this one you may have missed. It's not kind of over the years. I mean, this this came out maybe a few years ago, but it was one that I... See, they know. The one, that, <laughs> one that I played on Steam, um, and it's a, just a really fun couch co-op, like... I don't know, I guess you could play it at a party or whatever because it's just like a versus game. It's like a fighting game. But, Jack, what are you doing? <laughs> Picking my game. Well, <laughs> you're supposed to pick it before the show. I'm getting it off the shelf. Relax. I hate talking to an empty chair. You're talking to a room full of people and me. I'm like four feet away from you. <laughs> I'm four feet away from you. Anyway. Okay, that was more than four feet. That was at least 12 feet. <laughs> Would you like me to go get a tape measure and measure it out? Then I will tell you how many feet. No, it's 12, 12 feet away from I will you. lash you with that tape measure. <laughs> I can still hear you from 12 feet away. Um, That's how it sounds like. <laughs> Sim ants. <laughs> Sim ants. Good oh Lord. my God. Super Nintendo, huh? Um, anyways. Yes. So a fun, uh, not cou uh, couch fighting game. So there's yes. definitely no co-op in it. Um, it's called Lethal League. Lethal and League. it made me, it, it reminded me of it because the newer iteration of it, Lethal League Blaze, is coming out soon. Uh, but Lethal League is this really fun, colorful versus game. Like, it's a versus fighting game. Uh, the art style is akin to, again, like a, like a Jet Set Radio. It's very colorful, graffiti-inspired and whatnot. I've literally really. never heard of that. And because it was just like this little indie title that was okay. on Steam, and then I think it may have gotten to consoles eventually. But basically what it is, is it's a fighting game, but the way you fight is that there is a ball okay and you have to you smack the ball and it starts bouncing around the arena and every time it gets hit it goes faster <laughs> and you have to hit it so fast that your opponent can't hit it back and it smacks them in the face okay and knocks them out but the the whole kind of thing about it is when you pick the different players they all have different agility and different moves and different special abilities okay so basically you're trying to pick the right character to kind of offset the other character because hmm. you know your special ability might be able to like you know when you charge it up or whatever you might be able to curve the ball and the other guy's really slow so he can't hit it back or somebody has like a multi-ball attack or something like that so it's interesting it's this really really intense uh, fighting game, but in a completely different sense of how you fight. Reminds me of that that uh, NES dodgeball game. That super yeah, dodgeball. see, so it, it's like a really intense version of dodgeball, but yeah. instead of catching the ball and throwing it back, you right. were hitting it so it was faster and faster and faster until it's like right. blindingly fast, bouncing around this arena. That was such a good game. Until it hits someone. <laughs> Never heard of this League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> What's it about? I think I'll tell you when you're older. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like a Tetris, like a Tetris game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Something like yeah, that. Something along Match those lines. three. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, like super, super fun game. Has a really crazy art style to it. Lethal. Loop. Um, and there is a brand new, like I guess it's like the second game of it coming out. So it's it's similar to the first, but they've updated the graphics. They've updated uh, some of the gameplay, and they've added a few characters. And it's called Lethal League Blaze. So, nice. Yeah. Um, absolutely worth playing. I can't Sweet. wait for Blaze to come out. Sounds awesome. Okay. Okay, so what's yours? Uh, old one for the PS3, Stranglehold. Oh shit, Stranglehold. <laughs> now that was a release title, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was. It was. Uh, it was close though. Mm -hmm. That was like near the start because that was like one of the first games I played on PS3. Uh, I know it was fairly fairly early, but the the one thing you'll notice this is the, the collector's edition, which actually comes with hard boiled on the Blu-ray, which it was loosely based on because it's the same character. It was a but direct sequel to dir yeah. Hard Boiled, so it actually has Chow Yun Fat doing the voices in the game, and he's acting as himself. And it is his face on the character. Mm -hmm. Bullet time, Hong Kong kung fu battles, like everything from a John Woo movie. And John Woo actually directed it, like the game. And one of the, the craziest things I remember about this game specifically was because it was PS3 and we were getting into kind of like the next gen graphics at that point destructible environments yes. while gunfire's going off you have all the tiles breaking off everything and everything's exploding off of the counters and yeah 2007 yeah, yeah so that was near it was near early release. it yeah. was early yeah Very i mean early. it still has the original red bordered ps3 design with the spider-man font exactly yeah so that's that's fairly early but still it was a it was a good title and, and um because it was uh it had the movie on it 
it was not supposed to be sold in Canada. I got that one off eBay. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, and then the guy... What, is Stranglehold uh, uh, or is uh, Hard Boiled illegal in Canada? Or no, <laughs> it was just because of like rights to movies and whatnot. You oh, know, okay. The whole Canadian thing. Gotcha. Reg- regardless. Anyway. So, of course, you know, it was at, uh, at GameStop and they go, oh, no, it was canceled. I'm like, <laughs> don't give me that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I own it, buddy, so whatever. Anyway, uh, and it is literally a, a sequel to the game. It carries on the story. You're playing the same character whose name escapes me. You're not saving babies in this one. <laughs> but uh, it, it definitely uh, captures the same feel of a John Woo story oh absolutely doves and, and all yeah <laughs> and, yeah well basically right and you are like all the the traditional uh environments there is a a, a restaurant fight scene where yeah like pillars will like shatter from all the gunfire and you can like do bullet time jumps over counters and, and like the the two guns blazing while going through bullet time and, and everything. you can you can ride on the service cart yes backwards while yes firing. you can <laughs> yes you goddamn can <laughs> sliding down the the counter yeah yeah so Old basically thing. this this was like next level kind of like max pain dead to rights like it was that bullet time but this was bullet time refined right it was like bullet time essentially from uh the progenitor of that genre of games like mm-hmm. the movies uh um uh, what's the word the inspiration for all of those style of games yeah so she's still waiting for the <laughs> face-off sequel game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't want that just because I don't want Nicolas Cage anywhere near my games. I'm sorry. And John Travolta. <laughs> John Travolta, I don't give a shit. But Nicolas Cage, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Anyway, that is mine. Hidden Gem, Stranglehold. Um, the only way you'll be able to play that is if you have a PS3 at this point. Or an Xbox. But, I mean, you don't get the, the movie with it. Yep. So... <laughs> the yeah, one true god who nicholas cage or john travolta <laughs> depending on if you're a scientologist or not i suppose yeah it yeah could go either way <laughs> yep all right folks that's our show for this week if you like what we do here please tell your friends and fellow gamers and if you don't like what we do here tell us go to our twitter check it out at digital underscore fiasco you can send us a message you can tell us suggestions you can give us you know your feedback you can and ask us questions we'll answer them on the show oh yes absolutely <laughs> uh you know give us topics for our next checkpoint whenever that will be and uh <laughs> she just <reads> talking <laughs> about call of juarez jack call of juarez jack. it's looming on yeah. thursday <laughs> no i'll get to that i will get to that you can also check us out on psu.com we have a brand new heading under psu.com that says shows that's us all of our shows all of our video game shows we are appear the there. show we are we are the big show yeah um as for call of juarez yeah uh why would you play that is returning this thursday <laughs> Yep, Call of War as the cartel, <laughs> diving back into it. Yeah. Um, oh, on Complex Chris, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself. Uh, thank you, Complex Chris. We enjoy it every Monday night. Yeah. And uh, yes, and you can hear him groaning right now because oh my God. if you if you're not doing anything on Thursday night, Thursday. you can tune in again on Thursday every Thursday. Why would you play that? Makes its triumph return. <sighs> With the that, hot seat where we play shitty games. That feeling is not triumph. <laughs> I know what triumph feels like. This is not well, triumph. Well, I mean, it's triumph for me because I don't have to play Call of Juarez. Oh. But you might you might finish it this time, so there's that. Um, I'm going to go out to uh, how long to beat and, and try to calculate out exactly where we are. Yeah. Because I have a feeling we are nowhere near the end of that piece of shit. Well, whatever will be, we'll be here thursday evening to play call whereas the cartel a horrible horrible game yep and less me and more jack because you know, jack's actually playing at, <laughs> at, at, at some point uh, i just might sit down and, and do like the whole kingdom hearts thing i feel like well the we, core games anyways i mean it's, it's it's all on the disc right so i'd have to do it all it's just the thing right it, it's it, the the lore is so dense it's, to have anything left out it's like denser than a thousand fruitcakes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's not quite like uh, Legacy of Cain or Soul Reaver dense, but I mean, it's somewhere between there and like Metal Gear. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly where it is, but it's ridiculous. Metal Gear is light reading compared to <laughs> Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Roz Nine Volt says it's been too long. Need to start over. I'll fucking end you. <laughs> No, I won't allow it either. Oh I don't need to God. see that game. <laughs> Not a god. But yeah, anyways, chance. Thursday night, yep. 8 o'clock Central. 8 p.m. Central time. 
Tune in tomorrow for Kelly and Al Bell. They'll be back at the regular time, 7 p.m. Central Time for Comic Sons. Yep. I'm sure they'll be talking more about, uh, I don't think Daredevil this week. They, they pretty much... Uh, I think they went through it already. But yeah, the Dynamic Duo will be back yep. to talk about all the nerd comic book news Probably that you need. Probably Sabrina and Castlevania and <laughs> fucking Riverdale. Oh, definitely some Castlevania. Goddamn yeah. Riverdale. But yeah, every Tuesday night, we have Comic Sans with yep. our, our local nerds. Um, and uh, yeah, they're going to talk about all the comic book and nerd TV and movie stuff. <laughs> Next game wet. You know what? I'd be tempted, but no, no. <laughs> I, I would give it a shot. No. I remember it being kind of fun. No, in any case, friend, uh, tell your friends, tell your fellow gamers, pass us along, and if you haven't already, hit the uh, the follow button there at the bottom so we can uh, like announce you. We'll also we'll have uh, uh, notifications on Twitch. We'll have notifications on Twitter every time we go live, as well as a big post on PSU. Yep, absolutely. All right, folks. Hopefully, you'll join in tomorrow. See Kelly and Abel and Comic Sans. Uh, if not, uh, we're just gonna fire up our names again. <laughs> Indeed, right there. We're gonna go for the night. I'm Jack McBastard, and I'm Dan Droid. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. It's been a great show. We appreciate all of you. Check out No Beard. Check out Maltesers. Check out Commander Santa. Check out Chloe Sky Cosplay, for that matter. Yep. And, uh, and Jay Tuki, all and our I, fellow streamers. And I look forward to seeing all your lovely faces next Monday. See you in Juarez. Oh. <laughs> Don't get him fired up. We got to go. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>